Hello folks, I'm back and uh, this time there's no Twitch chat to talk to or anything like that. It is Sunday night, the day after Viper and Hera have finished their best of 21. I have not been spoilered at all. I've been very busy today. I couldn't stream, but I did promise that I would cast these games to upload to YouTube. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And without further ado, let us start on game number 11 here. Um, this series... It was pretty hard fought the first day. It's six to four currently for Hera, but we all know Viper. He's got some fight left in him, and it's a best of 21, of course. So Hera needs to win at least five more games. <laughs> so it's a lot of games in between him and uh, the victory in this set. Of course, both players having to play four best of 21 matches in this Champions Invitational. Welcome in. It's just me and you, YouTube. I know we don't get to talk. We don't get to snuggle very often, but uh, here we are. The map is African Rebets, and this was popularized, I believe, with NAC, although it wasn't picked very often in the main event. I do remember it in the qualifiers. There is fish down here, or dolphins, rather, to be more specific. You can go dock these, um, but your fishing ships can be harassed by land units. So it's definitely a risk to come out and dock these. There is also food in the center in the form of box turtles. And this is a lot more attainable. If you're willing to risk sending your villagers out to the center, they kind of become a target if you go out there. So it is definitely a little bit of a risk to extend that far. Viper playing as the Malians here. And Malians should be good in this situation if you want to go for the dock at the back. It potentially into fishing ships. Saving wood on all your buildings is very helpful. But it looks as if Viper is choosing instead to go for the barracks early. And that might indicate that he wants to go out here and take this shore fish if he's going to go for militia really early. Or maybe men-at-arms. It always kind of throws me off with these nine villager starts, right? Like, it feels like we're barely into the game, three and a half minutes in. And players are already thinking about going up to Feudal Age, maybe adding some men-at-arms. It's kind of, it's a little bit weird as Hera now adds a barracks of his own. Now, Hera, back gold, back stone is pretty good. Back berries as well. All his resources, basically, in this area. And he's got wood lines to go to, so he's got himself a decent base. We look at Viper's base, also pretty good, right? I wonder if this is standard, just having your resources at the back automatically like this. Looking pretty good for the snake, and he has indeed come out for this mill. Coming forward with the scout. We'll take a look at what Viper can see. You can see the barracks from Hera. Does not see any units or flags to accompany that. So that's can neither confirm nor deny that militia might be on the menu here from Hera. Hera is one on gold though, so it's probably some militia that are gonna be added in here. Ooh. Viper really housed on this militia, isn't he? He's forced to build the house with two villagers. That's not great. He is getting a decent amount of food income in here because he's got these three villagers on the box turtles, but being stalled off that militia is kind of annoying if you're Viper, right? You really want to capitalize on a clean build on the advantage that Malians might have over Celts, which is getting to Feudal Age potentially a little bit sooner. As you can see, he's gone up one villager faster than Hera. But getting house like that is going to stall you out just a little bit. He's adding that third militia right now. Should still have enough um, to go for the men-at-arms upgrade immediately upon reaching Feudal Age. So the housing crisis didn't really didn't really stop him all that much as men-at-arms is now coming in. And Hera sneaking around this way. Did he see the militia from Viper? I think he did. And he's seen the mill as well. So he knows Viper is in the center. And the militia now from Viper engaging against the militia from Hera. Hera's going to run away. Good hits there from Viper onto that scout. This men at arms now comes in for Hera as well. And I wonder where Hera chooses to hit. He knows where the men at arms are from Viper. His militia are faster because he's Celts. And now Viper is just kind of like, screw this. I'm going to your base, bro. I'm not going to be chasing you all day. Hera's probably going to check back here for the fish. And he's not going to find anything, so... Men-at-arms will likely come back. Try and look for that wood line from Viper. Meanwhile, Viper coming forward. 
with his own units, and he's added an archer range. Does Hera have one? Yes. One archer advantage from Viper. Hera just producing his first one. He's going for the blacksmith as well. Still has not gone for a dock of his own. As we can see those archers coming forward. And Hera not able to do any damage. My villagers are nice and sparkly today, by the way. Sometimes they smoke, sometimes they glow, sometimes they sparkle. There's always something with those wood choppers. I don't know why it doesn't apply to the gold villagers or the villagers on pigs or anything. I don't know. Man-at-Arms not finding anything for Viper. He has met them up with his archer, though. And he knows the gold is here. He knows the berries are here. So maybe he could be a little bit annoying over here. If he positions them correctly, there's potential to trap. But I think he's worried about this exact thing. He's worried about Hera having archers here. And I think there's some harassment over on this side. Yes, indeed. One archer going down from Viper. Looks like a Men-at-Arms dying as well from Hera. And one scout going down for Viper too. But he's managed to save all the villagers. And it looks like he's cleared up all the infantry from Hera. Meanwhile, at the back, Man at Arms still kind of running away. He is Malliant, so they do have that plus one Pierce armor. Hera has to be a little bit more careful with his archers, and now another archer range is being added from Viper. Hera still only on one. Fudiko, not quite there from Hera just yet. Looks like Viper's interested in going for a dock, and Hera actually going for a dock at the same time. So interesting. Usually the meta on this map, or I guess previously in the qualifiers, which to be fair, qualifiers for NAC, when we primarily saw this map, were generally lower quality players than Heron Viper. But the meta then was to go out for the dock super early. The meta between these two seems to be apply pressure on lands, either grab hold of or harass the area in the middle. And then add a dock later. When you can uh, afford it with your wood eco. Viper's still running around. He's not going to find anything here. The archers from Hera are there. The archers are enough to drive Viper away. But he is getting the armor. And Hera, in the meantime, looks like he's adding to his food eco, right? More farms coming in. Viper's still kind of relying on this fish from the center. He's only got one farm behind here. He's got a lot of villagers on berries, and he's starting to create the fish. But the food eco from Hera is really being developed. Um, I wonder if that's just, you know, courtesy of the more wood coming in for Celts, or maybe just a stylistic thing from Hera as he adds in two more farms. We look at Viper's base, still only one farm. But Hera is one range production against double range production for Viper. He's going to have more food in the bank. So he's probably going to be up to Castle Age first. But I wonder, against double range, against the fact that Viper still has these men-at-arms alive, like how is Hera going to survive in order to reach Castle Age? <laughs> Clever stuff here from Viper. He's got the villager right near the fishing ship. So he's just repairing if the scout attacks it. If the scout attacks the villager, he can just fend. she can fend for herself. With the scout on 12 HP. And Viper already harassing the woodline from Hera. He does have more woodlines back here, but... Has not moved back there yet. As he gets double bit axe just now, Viper's still missing that. So, builds were tight at the beginning. No double bit axe for Viper. Double bit axe just now coming in for Hera. And the military count, I mean, it does favor Viper. Right? And Viper has that plus one armor. Hera does not have that. However, Hera's at 600 food currently. And Viper's at 200. So, in terms of the Castle Age timings, it's not looking that great for the Snake. As Hera now goes for a defensive tower on the woodline. That'll protect him from both sides. Against just feudal archers. Fishing ships might be exposed at the back here too. Viper should probably just send his men-at-arms against those, honestly. You don't want to risk the archers. Like, what if Hera has a demo in production, right? What if? He probably doesn't, but what if? He can't risk it. And there it is. <laughs> what if? Our what if scenario has come true. And Viper's not even going to come back here. Hera clicks up the castle age. Viper's Fudiko actually looking okay. And yeah, he added 
Six more farms behind that. Still has the villagers on the middle. Still has production for both those archer ranges. I actually want to sneak over here and take a look at the all-time efficiency. 80%. Pretty solid on both of those ranges. 80% efficiency. As Viper now tries to take out the archers. He is a solid 45, 50 seconds behind Hera right now to the Castle Age. Not too much of a difference, especially considering Viper has the army advantage and Viper has the map control right now. So it's not huge. Still only one villager killed here this entire game. Speak of the devil and he shall uh, appear. Second villager goes down from Hera. Viper gets that gold upgrade. 15 archers versus 8. Oh boy. What on earth is Hera going to do? I mean, Celts kind of want to be the aggressor in Kel Castle Age, right? You don't want to be the guy that's just sitting back defending. If you go into Heavy Crossbow to defend, I mean, you can't really upgrade those if you're transitioning into Imperial Age, right? Celts don't get Bracer. Also, if you go into Knights, they don't get Bloodlines. It's just, it's a really awkward situation for Hera if he doesn't have, like, a forward Siege Workshop setup. Or if he doesn't have the opportunity to go for multiple TCs as he loses another Villager on the farms here. Viper's done a really, really good job. And Viper sees that Hera is in Castle Age. He's just going to retreat for the time being. He's even moved his villagers away from the center because he knew he couldn't hold it. And Hera is coming forward with archers. So Hera was defending with the skirms. He's coming forward with the archers. Figured he couldn't use them at home. And he's going to look for some damage. He's also got a couple scouts which could potentially raid the fish. But it looks like Viper's defended just fine for now. And he's only got a portion of his army coming back to defend against this. His main army is still forward, and he's waiting for the crossbow bodkin arrow upgrade to come in. 20 archers versus 7. And Hera's not even getting that crossbow upgrade. He has found another villager back here, though. So, hello, scouts? Hello? Hello? Are we? Okay. It just took a minute. It just took a minute. That's it. They're attacking the fishing ships now. All, all's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't don't you worry about it. Anyway, like I was saying, Hera does not even have any archers left. They all died. Okay. Fantastic. Guess Viper cleared him up with the crossbows. He can't go for that crossbow upgrade. Doesn't have an army. He's making knights right now with only the first armor upgrade. He's got some mangonels here, and it's kind of a situation where, like, he just needs to get a shot. Right, he needs a big shot here. Knight's now coming across the field. He's trying to open things up. He's trying to make it messy. But you can, you can see, Viper's already identified this as a potential problem. He's going for more house walls here. He's trying to lock down his base so that Hera can't open it up. And he's looping around behind with the crossbows. Could find a ton of damage if he manages to sneak in at the back here but look at this from Hera town watch he's like yeah I kind of need to track where the army from Viper is and he's going to see it right here meanwhile in the center trying to come forward for a monastery Hera realizing this is the only place he can access stone and he's going to try and take hold of this and maybe pressure forward to Viper's base the attack round's kind of doing more damage to his knight than Viper's knight but it's just enough to chase him away Another demo raft on the way as Viper is harassing this wood line once again. And that raft should... Yep. Bye-bye. Two crossbows. But at least they killed the villager on their way out. Villager count 49 to 45 in favor of Viper. But we look at the military count. It's 31 to 15. And we're thinking about what Civ scales better. It's got to be Malians, right? They're far more flexible than the Celts. Far more flexible. Like the Celts, you really want either that early pressure with your infantry archer uh, opening build, or you want a forward position in Castle Age. And Hera is attempting to grab a forward position here. But he's still got to go through a lot of Viper's buildings to even get access to this TC. So I don't really see an advantage from this position for Hera. I mean, it's 35 military to 18. 
Unless he gets some massive shots here with the mangonels. Viper's in a really, really good spot. Hera also only has one monk on the field. So if Viper is going to come in here with his knights and snipe these mangonels, he can only max get one conversion. If the monk doesn't die first. Why'd you kill the ostrich, Hera? Hang on a second. Why are you attacking random ostrich, huh? What did they do to you? It's not fair. Husbandry, forging. Coming in for Hera. Now Viper killing lions? Oh my god. These players, man. Viper does not have any fish left. Hera still has two fishing ships. Despite the best efforts of Skirmisher Bro over here. Hera still has two fishing ships. That guy almost went down. Dude almost went down. New Civ bonus idea. Fishing ships that heal. I guess Bengalis have that, right? I suppose it would apply to the fishing ships. It's not something you think of very often, but I guess it applies to all ships. I want to see a Bengali Thericidae. That's what I want to see. <laughs> make it a team unit that everyone on the Dravidians team can make. Imagine a Thericidae that heals over time. Terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Knights, sorry, scouts here from Hera, looping around. Viper getting redemption and sanctity. Both players still kind of around the same village account, 56 to 55, but Hera does have that second TC, and Viper is now stretching out to one of the gold sites. So on this map, you have a couple starting piles of gold. The rest of the gold is all on these hills. So there's one hill over here, one hill over here. Hera is grabbing the relic from here, but he's going to miss the villagers coming up for this castle. And this is just the most viper castle of all time. He's lucky the monk missed him. He's going to build it with just two villagers super randomly. And Hera is going to be so preoccupied with this army. And we're trying to push here, trying to get some raids here in the back that uh, he's not even going to notice this castle going up with just simply two villagers. Hera coming back with the knights. Three monks are already targeted. One conversion comes in. Two conversions come in. More ostr- Dude! Chill! What did the ostrich ever do to you? Tragic. Absolutely tragic. I don't know about this Hera guy. Killing animals. <laughs> Disgusting. Monk tries to come out for this relic again. Herrick just calmly snatches that up, but the knights are going to take care of him. Nice attack rounds there from Herrick. He actually didn't kill his own monk somehow with those. Really, really nice. Now Herrick's going to figure out that Viper does have redemption. And this is not a good feeling, right? He can't get away with these mangonels. It's either delete or kill the monks that are converting you. And that's another mangonel converted. Viper has this one targeted, and oh, Hera is not going to be feeling very good about this one at all. He gets the shot away, and then he deletes. He's going for a castle in the center. Does have the villager lead, but once again, the military lead is heavily skewed into Viper's favor. And Viper also has control of one of these gold areas. Now he's going for a siege workshop of his own. Pushing forward with the crossbows. Still doesn't have ballistics on the crossbows. But I would imagine this is a university, which it is. And he has the opportunity to add in Gabettos now, which... I mean, Gabettos are going to do everything crossbows do here, except a little bit better. Right? They're going to be able to snipe the mangonels quickly. They're going to kill the knights faster. They're going to kill the monks faster. They move faster than the crossbows. Really, really great unit. The only downside is that they cost food, and... Well, Viper's food eco is not the greatest. Only 19 on food currently. Is going for another TC, though. So he continues to expand his economy behind this. As we look at Hera coming in now for a big counterattack. All of Viper's army is gone. I'm surprised that Hera hasn't done this sooner. I mean, there's a lot of potential here for damage. And I'm surprised, honestly, that Viper hasn't, like, completed these walls. Or made some more defenses at home. He seems kind of stunned that Hera would run into his exposed economy with the group of knights that has been hanging around for a few minutes now. 
I don't know why we'd be shocked by that, but he looks shocked. As now the Mangonel starts pressuring this TC. And there's monks to back it up. Five monks to back it up plus the crossbows. This TC is dead. You just have to abandon this position, I think, if you're a Hera. You send this Mangonel in, you're just going to give another Mangonel to Viper. Unless... Nice attack round. At the back here, more knights still making their way through. Camels are there to push them away. Hera is now ahead by 14 villagers. But he does not have wheelbarrow, and he only has the first wood upgrade as he loses the Mangonel under the TC. Wode Raiders, though, being added in from Hera. Interesting. You know, they're not a terrible non-elite unit now. Like, they have 11 attack. They used to have 8. They used to have 8 attack. But 11 is actually pretty good now. And I believe they used to only have 65 HP as well on the non-elite version. They have been significantly buffed. Are they enough to deal with knights? Hmm... I don't know, right? They don't get any applicable bonuses against cavalry. Maybe cost-effectively they're okay against knights. They're going to chase them away for now, but Hera has still taken some villager losses. And Hera now coming forward with a castle. Oh, boy. it's This feels... I don't want to say because he's at 90 villagers right now, but this kind of feels like a last-ditch attempt. Right? Like, he's making that castle right under a siege workshop. Viper has now, I believe, converted Hera's Siege Workshop. He's working away on his main TC. There's absolutely nothing that Hera can do against this army, especially without a Siege Workshop of his own. And now there's some military for Viper pushing forward towards his TC. Not TC, sorry, Castle. And yeah, Viper is over. It's GG. It's over. Like, Hera's going to lose all of these villagers over here. He's going to lose the TC. He's going to lose his farms over on this side. He might get the castle up, but at best, it takes out a couple villagers on the farms and the starting TC from Viper. He's got other town centers now. He doesn't have to worry about that too much. And this army just can't be stopped. Simply cannot be stopped. Eco Kitty now 35 to 19. And it's going to get worse, right? Hera down to 76 villagers, 10 villagers behind Viper. At one point, he was 14 villagers ahead, I believe at his peak. And he's just buying food. How many farms has he placed here? We have 31 placed farms. Right now, he's on 10 of them. Any fishing ships left? No. Nothing. Viper is now buying stone. Shift click to buy stone. And he's placing a castle defensively. That tells me that he's thinking, maybe I should go up to Imperial Age. Definitely need this castle to protect, protect myself. Um, but if I want to take this one down, as soon as I get to Imp, I can go for Trebs. From this relatively safe castle. And I'm still pushing over here. I mean, Viper knows he's going to win this game. 100%. And Hera calls the GG. Well played. Tacked on there. Viper takes another game. 6-5. to five. We have 11 games Played. We are officially more than halfway through this set if it goes to the final 21 games. And you can see Hera actually ahead in Eco there, but it didn't matter because Viper was just clearly ahead in military ever since he uh, added that second range. It was a very clear military advantage there uh, for Viper the entire game. So not surprising at all to see Hera call the GG. We are going to go back to our scene with all of the scores on it. And I realized that I don't have my notepad open. There we go. Six to five. We'll adjust all of this stuff. Took me a while to remember. I mean, of course, I could have just pulled up my VOD and gotten all the wins and losses. But it's kind of like a quiz show or something <laughs> where I like to try and remember each individual game it took me a while to get them all here loss for the celts win for the malians and uh we look on the map draft and that is a loss on african reed beds all right so let's go back to the replays and hopefully this will go a little bit faster than if i was casting this all live because I can just load right into all of these replays right away. Maybe we can speed up a little bit if it's a slower start. 
as we are now into game number 12. Game number 12, and it is Acropolis, and it's a Nomad start. So I hope you'll forgive me if I'm just going to speed up through the center. Center? Speed up through the uh, beginning of this. I was thinking about the center when I was going to talk about this map, because on this Nomad start Acropolis that's going to be featured in TCI, um, there is more fish, right? Normal Acropolis, you might have a deep fish, maybe, but it's not really dockable. On this one, especially with a Nomad start, where you can just send one of those villagers over here to build the dock at the beginning, it is a really, really important part of the map. And you need that food to be coming in quickly to help produce from your TC, to help yourself get up to the next age fairly quickly. And that's exactly what both players have done. Viper has gone for the Berbers, which is a very popular pick on Acropolis. I'm gonna go two times speed. I don't wanna I don't I don't wanna be here till midnight. I'm sorry. <laughs> um it is very, very popular on like Titans League Acropolis, right? You go Berbers because you can play scouts and tonights and camels and castle age, and usually camels are the thing that basically dominates this map. Now Persians on this version should be just as good as Berbers. Right? You can get that dock up a little bit faster. Um, your docks and your TCs produce a little bit um, faster once you get to Feudal Age. And Persians also have access to camels as well. Um, but basically the big thing for Persians is having the extra resources at the beginning to go for the dock right away and get that fishing ship out faster and then having the extra production on the docks and on the TCs, and of course, the HP on the dock is ridiculous. 3,600 versus 1,800. It's two times. Same thing goes for the TC. Really, really strong. And Hera up significantly faster than Viper. He's got 17 villager uptime. It's 20 villager uptime from Viper. As Hera did go up with Loom. Did Viper go up without Loom? He did. Oh my goodness. So Viper trying for the super greed here, folks. We're going to put out normal time as this first fire galley is going to pop out. Hera also going for a stable. That's unusual. Usually when you see um, water contests in the middle, players will go fire galley archery range because they're heavy on wood and gold. And they want a uh, composition that is also wood and gold, a.k.a. the archers rather than the scouts. But Hera... Seems to have enough food in the bank. Seems to be doing fine. Anyway, like I was saying, Viper going up without Loom on a map where you start with a scout. And you're against Hera? I don't know. Especially with a forward villager here? I don't know. Prime for the Ultra Greed approach. And he went for a demo first to try and just snipe the fish from Hera. Hera does lose that one fishing ship, and it looks like Viper's not really interested in contesting water at all. Just going to try and snipe the fish from Hera. Only got one of them with the demo, so I'm not sure that's worth. And Hera is calling Viper's bluff. He's like, I don't think you're going to invest anything further into water. I'm going to start adding in more fish here. Beefing up my food eco. And adding scouts at the same time. Viper is also adding scouts from this stable back here. He's added a few spearmen, and he's brought them forward to protect his berries, which are at... Wow, those are like the worst berries of all time. <laughs> top 10. Watch Mojo. Top 10 worst berries. Look at how far they are from the TC, and they're right on the edge here of this stone. We look at Hera's berries. I mean, they are pretty far away, too. Maybe that's just standard scripting, having them so far, but at least he can wall around the front. Viper's... Damn, dude. Those are pretty bad. Hera is adding in another fishing ship here. Keeping a scout in reserve, and he's got these three scouts running forward. Viper playing pretty conservatively. He's got his scouts at home, although he is working away on his sixth. So that's going to be a lot of military here for Viper. Hera's got to make sure he doesn't get overwhelmed. At the same time, Viper... Adding in more farms. It's looking like a fairly decent eco, even without the fishing ships. Hera? Adding in farms of his own, and he's got three fishing ships now, so the advantage should be with Hera. There's a reason that players are contesting this pond. It's because the fish are very valuable. 
So you can't just be giving up that easy on these fish here and giving those to your opponent for free. It's not just about how much you're getting out of it. It's about how much you can deny your opponent as well. And Viper has basically just given those to Hera. Demoraft is coming out though, so he's going to hope he can run the gauntlet between these two uh, fires. And that he can come through here, maybe snipe two fish this time. Decent engagements here from Viper. Trying to fight uphill against these scouts. Both players now jockeying for position uh, with these. Trying to get those hill bonuses. And the demo is coming in. Viper wasn't paying attention. Paying attention to these scouts. He set the waypoint out here. He only gets one fish again. Underwhelming for sure. Uh, if you're asking Viper about his demos there. Horse collar, or not horse collar, sorry, bloodlines on the way from Hera. Bloodlines on the way, and most of his scouts are fairly close to uh, full HP. So that'll be nice for sure. As bloodlines is about to kick, and it does pop in. So Hera will have the advantage against these scouts from Viper. Two villagers forward. What are th are these for another dock? Does Viper want to redock this area? By the way, Hera has just missed those two villagers. Maybe it's not for redock. Maybe it's for a tower. It is. It is for redock. But Hera's gonna spot this. Or is he? Oh no. Okay, he does. He spots it at thirty-five percent. The scouts from Hera are forward. They're going to be pushed away by that Spearman. Even with Bloodlines. He can take that fight, but he doesn't want to lose the HP for free. And Viper is keeping his scouts at home in reserve as Hera now finds his dock. And Viper is forced to quick wall these two villagers in here. They aren't going to be doing very much. That's for sure. They're just going to be repairing walls and hoping they don't die. Castle Age now on the way for both Viper and for Hera. Hera getting a lot of text along the way too. Horse Color coming in, forging. The gold mining upgrade as well. And Viper doesn't even make anything with that dock. He's like, well, I tried. <laughs> I tried to contest this. He found it. I invested into a dock. Some village idle time, but it's not the worst thing in the world. It's gonna be fine. Scout's working away on the house here. Hera's gonna take that out. And Viper now getting bloodlines. He's getting forging. However, Hera has the upgrade advantage right now. He's got seven scouts, but he has more HP than Viper total. And he's going for the armor before Viper goes for it. So Viper has to be very careful. Oh my god! Nice demo there from Viper. Really, really nice demo. We see all the damage done, right? What, like, look at how much HP they have now. Oh, my God. Sick demo from Viper. He didn't kill many. Like, I think he only killed one scout there. But he got a ton of HP damage. And now, suddenly, he has map control. Like, this this is a huge Uno reverse for the way the game was going so far. And he gets the Castle Age at the same time as Hera. Hera is producing camels now. Viper is not. And Viper goes for another demo. And this time he's going to find two ships. Oh, man. I mean, the demo on the scouts was nice. But the other demos have been slightly underwhelming. I think that would be fair to say. Second town center from Hera. Second town center from Viper. And Hera is now coming forward with the light cab. As Viper tries to go for Mux. Wants to grab those relics. Definitely wants to grab these relics here. There's also three exposed villagers that Hera might feel like he can take out. But that's an early warning system for Viper's light cap. And to keep his monk inside the monastery. Rather than setting the waypoint outside. So maybe it doesn't work in Hera's favor that he found those villagers as he loses a light cap now. Camels are coming across. They're cheaper for the Berbers. However... The Persians still get access to them, and you can see uh, Hera producing a few of them. As the Light Cavern now just kind of protecting Viper's base. He's playing 
kind of greedy right now. I mean, the, the up click without Loom, definitely greedy. Um, but he's producing enough military to survive currently. And he's got a few monks. If he converts some camels, could be a big swing. Light Cav from Hera. Can't really engage. Viper still has the Spear Mini. He's going to be fine. He is going to be fine. And we're getting into the mid game here. And this is where the Berbers are really going to shine in this in this Civ matchup, right? They can shine later, actually, too, in Imperial Age. Feels like the Persians have to really take advantage of being favored on water. And get all that food inco, and then get a pretty big boost from it. Otherwise, the Berbers are just going to steamroll. And Hera's about to be out of fish. There's some shore fish here, but the deep fish are all gone. You can see 700 food from the shore fish. That could still be valuable as Viper gets fervor. Berber's one of the only sieves uh, without access to sanctity. I think it might be the only sieve with redemption that doesn't have sanctity. Maybe one of the newer um, Indian split sieves has that, but as far as I know... They're the only one. I'm sure it, I'm sure the YouTube comments will be like, Dave, actually, there's five or six or seven of them. And um, I can't believe that you're a caster and you don't know that. Because I study the... T anyway. <laughs> it warms my heart to know that you sleep side by side with the AW2 tech, tech tree every night. It really does. Okay, Monk, we need to just yeet this relic as far forward as possible. That's a good throw. That's a really good throw. And this is almost a good throw from Viper, kind of going under the TC with camels around with his light cap. Kind of want to keep these alive, right? Any military presence is good. Even if they don't stack up so well against the camels, they do well against the monks. They're fast. They can raid villagers. And they're intimidating. So you definitely want to keep those light cap alive. It's not something you want to throw away. Third TC now from Viper. We've had a third TC for a while here from Hera. And you can see right now, 68 villagers against 58. So Hera does have the advantage. He's really used the uh, extra food that he got from the fish. In the center here, he's put it back into his eco. And he hasn't been overproducing military either. There's now buying wood. Buying wood for what? We don't know. Oh, a mining camp. Okay. So he wants a castle or maybe wants a 4th TC. It looks like he wants a castle, right? Look at his res. 37 on food. That's actually really sick. The way that Hera can add like farm economy behind in basically any game is sick. Definitely the best farmer in Age of Empires. Definitely. But Dave, what about... Oh, welcome back. But Dave, what about T90? I can confirm that T90 is not the best farmer. By a long shot. Camel's now pushing out from Viper. Plus two armor is on the way. Hera's about to click up. He doesn't have the second building. But damn, dude. Damn. I mean, the way this guy just gets his food eco under control. Farms are so annoying to place when you're trying to do other things. Especially in a limited plateau like this where you don't have that much space and whatnot. It's just amazing what this guy can do. Imperial Age and Pikeman. So it's going to be likely a halb opening here from Hera. He's gone for a few fish traps or one fish trap already. Hasn't gotten the memo but standing on top of fish traps yet. He's still making them one tile away from the dock. Which is quaint. And Viper is still kind of just stuck in the Castle Age loop. He might be getting a feeling now that Hera's not really engaging against him. That Hera's no longer producing military for a Castle Age engagement. Might be making a tech switch. Might be going up to Imp. You definitely are, are getting those vibes if you're Viper right now. Because there's just simply no army to con like contest. There's no army to engage against. Now, Viper has gone for a castle at home. Camel archers are his ultimate composition, for sure. 
And now he's going to try and convert the fire galleys. He gets one, and bye-bye fishing economy from Hera. It served him well. Godspeed, fishing ship. It has gotten him a massive advantage. 98 villagers against 83. The Imperial Age timing so much faster. Even hand cart on the way. And he almost has enough for a castle now. Now, my only question is, where does this castle go? Because if you're Persians... You kind... Do you want to make it defensively against Berbers? Not really. You're going to lose in the long game. Like, if, if we're playing post-imp against post-imp, the Berbers have so many more options than the Persians. Mostly in the form of the Camel Archer, which can be an extremely powerful unit in this matchup. Mark it. Coming up from Viper, and Viper's just kind of playing patient. He's still adding Vils. His foodie co is is not looking anywhere near Harris was even just five minutes ago. Goes for another castle though, and uh just kind of calmly adding camels. So he doesn't feel that threatened by this Imperial Age. And yeah, okay. Now he buys some food. He bought food for Fletching? What? Just like imp and then fletching, you know? Weird. Viper's fire kind of putting in work over here. We have to wonder what that sound is. Oh my god, it's deafening for me. I know it's probably not as loud for you, but something, something's cooking in this dock. What are we making here? We having a barbecue or what? Oh my god. Oh my god. Good. It's it's uh it's lessened over here on the left side of the map. Blast furnace coming in for Hera. Maybe that's where they were researching the blast furnace in here. And Imperial Age is on the way for Viper. Heavy Camel already in from Hera, but he made his first castle back here, and this means that, well, all of the trebuchets will have to slowly roll their way across the map. Halbadi are now coming in for Hera. Halban Camel. Love having two counters of the same thing in one composition, but I guess he had the numbers anyway. The difficulty for Hera is going to come when he's looking for a tech switch into something else, right? You can't tech switch usually into Paladin here because of the sheer camel numbers from Viper. Uh, Halbadiers will die to the Camel Archers. Camels will die to well micro camel archers. And Persians don't have a lot of other options. Like if you're just fighting against camels, sure the halbs are fine. If you're just fighting against knights, sure the camels are fine. Hell, even against the camel archers, maybe the camels are okay. When you have a combination of both though, Skirms aren't really an option for Persians. They don't get Bracer. They're just not going to be as effective. Commander and Crossbows, while they might be cost-effective in the long term, you're going to die before that because your opponent's just going to overwhelm you. They're just simply too weak. Elephants are too expensive. We're running out of options here. <laughs> Hussar maybe for the raids. Maybe you just raid him to death. We've seen Hera do that before, so it, maybe it has potential. Ballistics, Masonry coming in for Viper. Imperial Age is almost in, and he'll go for another castle, and it is once again defensive. He's got 18 Camel Archers. Bracer will help a lot. They also have Ballistics now. Chemistry will help a ton for Viper. Especially if he can add in some Bomber Cannons to potentially snipe these traps. gonna be heavy camel first so he gets heavy camel before he goes for chemistry garrisons these camel archers and keeps on popping in and outside of his castle try and keep them safe it's really important you keep the mass with the camel archers very very important and he's in and out of the castle constantly also important for Hera that he doesn't throw away too many halves and camels against his castle if he loses too much of this army, these camels from Viper 
like just come swooping in snipe all the trebs viper doesn't have to waste all this gold buying stone to repair this castle so Hera's doing a fantastic job just kind of inching forward pushing the army back from viper he's basically fighting for position here and he knows the longer this goes either viper's gonna have to give up on that castle and he can push up the hill or viper's gonna exhaust himself buying stone to repair that castle either situation is good for Hera. he just needs to be very careful with this army and not lose too many of them he takes the engagement now I don't know if it's the greatest one. He does have helps against camels over there, but the camel archers are doing some great work. The castle's also getting involved here, and Hera is losing a lot of units. Viper lost all of his camels in front, though, so he has no opportunity to snipe the trebs. Might have been a decent fight there from Hera. Viper also running out of stone extremely quickly. He's going to have to buy some more. Meanwhile, on this side, looks like Hera came in with some units. Viper was able to fight it back. He had a lot of idle vill villagers there, Viper, so good thing he got those under control, but Hera coming forward with more camels. 38 camels here from Hera. And it's just non-stop production, and the castle, I mean, Viper's already sunk, what, six, seven, eight hundred stone into repairing that? He's just going to let it die now. He's simply going to let it die now. Loses a production building for his camel archers. Loses something that was helping him defend um, this hill. And now that the castle is gone, Hera might just feel free to push up here. Two camels in the queue for Viper. That's it. And Hera goes for another castle. This should be Hera's game. Really, really well played. He killed Viper before Viper had a chance to really get all his upgrades in for these camel archers. Chemistry still wasn't in. The None of the armor upgrades are in. Um... Magrabi Camel isn't in. Elite Camel Archer isn't it? He's missing so many crucial upgrades for completing this death ball from the Berbers. And Hera is just non-stop pressuring. Blast Furnace even being denied from that blacksmith. Really, really good stuff here. This should probably be cleared up, though, if you're Hera. Can't be letting Viper just take gold casually over there. Under the eyes of your outpost. Two relics inside of that monastery, and those are going to go down shortly. The treads still firing away. And yeah, more raids on this side. Now Hera has a castle he can sit his treads under and attack this castle from Viper. Thumb ring just now coming in for Viper. Like I was saying, missing crucial upgrades for these camel archers. As chemistry now comes in for Hera. However... Viper still has 25 camel archers. His camels are cheaper. With the Berbers. And he's got the, the mobility of this composition. So anything could potentially happen. I think it's still heavily favored for Hera. As Viper tries to raid back here. And it's just not happening. Castle now coming forward from Hera. I'm surprised he hasn't set up his trebs over here to attack. Um, but he's just going to attack from this hill. And I mean, it's still four treads. Even if they're fighting uphill, still four treads. It's still a Viper without that much stone in the bank. Just 100. And the stone price is getting a little bit ridiculous. 203 gold to buy 100 stone now. Still no chemistry for these camel archers. I guess the armor doesn't matter if you're never getting hit by anything. If you pull them back in time, but yeah, loses that castle and he calls the GG. Hera getting his seventh win. He just needs he just needs four more wins. <laughs> Specif 21s are so ridiculous, man. He only requires four more wins. That's like a best of seven right there. And yeah, that was a good performance there from Harrow. We'll mark that down. We are going to have a win for the Persians. Uh, Persians, Persians, Persians. There they are. Win for the Persians and a loss for the Berbers. I'm surprised Viper got Berbers that late in the draft. If you're wondering where the Burmese are, though, Bop, we mentioned it before, they were the random ban. 
We don't have, uh, or we have one too many sieves, rather, for these best of 21. So always one sieve gets randomly banned. The first two sets, it was Lithuanians. Just the same ban two times in a row. Amazing. Acropolis is a win for Hera, and we'll mark that one down. Seven to five. Viper's still in a decent position, right? Obviously, Hera being ahead by two games is not great, but uh, Viper has five wins of his own, so it's not the worst thing in the world. And we go on to game number 13 now. Game number 13 is going to be Frigid Lake, I believe. I think I caught a glimpse. No! Ooh, this... I'm hearing the burning again. Oh my god, man. What is going on in the middle of the map? Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. We're closing. Hang on a sec. We're restarting capture age. I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> what is going on? Something is cooking. Something is definitely cooking in these games. Hopefully we get rid of that burning sound. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's gone. Okay, it's gone. It's gone. Anyway, El Dorado, classic map. Uh, I believe it was featured in some hidden cups. We're going to speed through the uh, little first part of the game here. Just to, you know, make sure I have some of my Sunday night left to enjoy. After these ones. El Dorado, there's fish on the outside. You can go for docks. You have fish around your TC here. Um, Marlin. And that means that you're going to have a pretty good start. You have all this food to take. Also... In the center, we have gold and we have stone. And the big thing about El Dorado is this is all visible. So your opponent can see if you're coming out for this gold or stone. Your opponent knows if you go through the middle. It's uh, it's very, very interesting map. And it used to be super popular. We haven't seen it in quite a while. As Viper now gets to the Feudal Age. And he is going to open with a stable here. He's playing as the Chinese as we get back to normal time. And Viper is going to take out a villager here from Hera. Hera is playing as the Aztecs on El Dorado. Now, the Chinese should be really good on this map because you have all this extra food, right? Hera is now trying to lame. He's trying to lame, folks. That's not going to work. Damn, dude. Hera just tossed away his eagle. Viper's going to take that out. Like I was saying, Chinese should be really good. You start with minus food on the nine villagers start with Chinese. Uh, but you do still start with three villagers extra. So you're starting on 12. And having food available right away means you can click loom and then have zero seconds of idle TC time. With minus food. So really good stuff from the Viper to get his TC working that quickly. Really, really nice. He is matching up against Aztecs, though, and Aztecs, well, especially on a map like El Dorado where there's a focused area where you just kind of need to win this area to win the map, the Aztec military production can really come in clutch, especially with a, a, maybe a death ball of eagles or monks or mangonels or, you know, the things that we've seen from Aztecs a million times before. Chinese do have a more varied tech tree than them, though, so if the game goes later... I think it swings more into the Chinese advantage. It's probably Chinese advantage early as well. Um, because of the additional villagers. But when we're getting to feudal age like this, or especially early castle age, mid castle age, that's where the Aztecs thrive. That's where they're really, really good. Scouts here from Viper. Skirmisher and Archer. He added that Archer range really quickly behind. And Viper's going to be able to clear up this Spearman over here. He's going to be able to clear up some of the Archers on this side as well. And he's just taking the fight against the Spearman. Even in these choke points where it's really tough for him to surround it with scouts, he's still just taking the fight. He knows there's a potential here to overwhelm Hera. He feels like maybe there's some blood in the water. As Hera got in a really bad position there with his archers and his skirmishers. And Viper is still even just going to engage against this Spearman. And Viper, man, Viper's just coming in. He just tossed four scouts away in the last little bit. I don't know if that's the greatest, you know, trade ever. But 
He does see that Hera has the tower here. He could see it without the military even coming forward. And he's going to go for a tower of his own. He's also gone for a forward dock. So Viper just went for a mill here on the shorefish, which is kind of inventive. Looks like Hera has gone for a dock to fish of his own. But, uh, I'm sorry, fish on his own over here. But uh, Viper will go for the forward dock, and he's going to be able to take out these fishing ships at the same time. He is harassing the gold and harassing the stone in the center. Nice stuff from Viper. I love the aggression. Love aggressive Viper. Passive greedy Viper is great, but I love me some aggressive Viper. Really entertaining. And he'll be in a position to weaken these fish at least. Hera will run away with that. Viper will simply target the other ones. And Hera is simply waiting. He's waiting for his fire, fire galley to come out. Tower is still being hit at the front here. And Viper is actually on stone. Hera is not yet. And if Hera wants to take stone, he's going to have to go all the way around here into the line of fire of this tower. So Viper has the advantage when it comes to this tower war. Hera is already running out. He's going to have to buy it. Now Viper will go for another tower over here as he still runs around with these scouts. Hera goes for a market at the back. Doesn't really have enough resources to buy his way up to Castle Age. So. Maybe that mark is just to buy some more stone to keep repairing this tower. He does see this tower for Viper, remember. All visible, right? All visible. He can see it. But maybe it's distracted elsewhere, as in... The fishing ships that Viper can't quite take out. Archers looping around to the side here. Hera knows these are here because he got Town Watch. And he's going to have the skirmishers back to deal with them. Fletching for both players. So Viper going to try and get within minimum range. But I think this army is kind of dead. Right? Eagles are chasing after. Skirmishers are going to get at least one more volley. Probably another one on this archer. Yep. And Viper disagrees. He shows up with the scouts. He's going to be able to take out an eagle. Working away on the skirmishers. And just kind of a military reset over on this side. As another skirm goes down, eagle goes down. Another skirm goes down. And Viper ends up winning this fight. What? <laughs> I, thought, I thought Hera was going to clear everything and be left with an eagle. But nice... Uh, Nice fight there from Viper, for sure. Fishing ships are still working away for Hera, and he's gone for another dock over here. So he's going to continue to expand his control over the fish. Hera the, is the only one to open with a dock. Uh, Viper went with this dock later, and Viper has actually made some fish of his own, so... It's very nice. <laughs> As Hera comes in here, one villager down for Viper. Trying to go for another tower. Does not lose another villager. And now he's completely kicked Hera off the gold. Hera losing the villager there. Hera losing the archers over here. Using the market a little bit to get himself up to Castle Age. But still, triple tower. In the center here from Viper. Really, really nice. And Hera's only firing one arrow back at this tower. So he's doing one damage per hit. Viper's got a couple archers garrisoned in this, so Viper should win that tower contest in the center as he pulls back the fire galley, and Hera's going to find out exactly where Viper's dock is. At least he will assume, since there's just a random villager over here. Should assume that the dock is somewhere on this side. Hera has added the second barracks. He's adding a third barracks. And Aztecs are about to just do Aztec things here. I would love to see Viper wall in these towers. I would also love to see him wall in his base. And of course he has. It's Viper. Of course he has. I, I was in the middle of saying that sentence. I'm like, I'd love to see Viper wall in his base. And I look on the mini-map, and it's just the most structured wall of all time, right? Is kind of missing the gaps at the front, which is concerning, to say the least. But... Uh, Maybe when he sees this eagle armor or eagle army coming, he's going to be fixing that. And that's exactly what he's trying to do. However, the archers are here from Hera. And that's 
Very annoying timing. Extremely annoying timing. Viper, you gotta hit that, my dude. He does. Gets the other side, hits it, goes for the house, is behind. Eagles can't get in currently. But it's only Palisade Walls here. And Viper is still a minute and 20 seconds away from Castle H. So there's some work to be done yet to keep your base secure as nine more Eagles make their way across. Aztecs doing Aztec things for sure. Archer's falling back. Hera doesn't even want to mess with these towers at all. This is the type of setup where your eagles feel fine against one tower, but then you charge in here to try and take them out, and 30 seconds later you realize that most of your eagles are either dead or half HP. Because <laughs> the towers are just chipping away at them. And it's just not a good feeling, especially if you don't want to get that second armor upgrade. Oh, boy. Where on earth did Hera get that stone? It looks like he bought a, a bit of stone. And yeah, he's taking the, I believe it's double tile stone at the, at home. At each one of these bases. And now he's going for a castle. And I mean, he's going to control this middle area. Regardless of the three towers there from, from uh, Viper. With this castle, Hera is not going to be denied off this stone. And Viper is going to have to look for a solution now. Viper has taken... All of the stone at his base. He currently has 515 in the bank. He's gone for some knights now. To try and deal with the eagles. And some of those eagles are dying. And this is a situation I was talking about, right? Like, you feel like the eagles should be doing okay against these towers. But then you look and <laughs> they're all weak. They're all weak. Hera's going to need to do something about that for sure. Maybe garrison them inside the castle. Maybe heal them up at some point. But like I said, Viper has been kicked off of this side, and he's going to be forced to go for a castle of his own to secure this. Where do you make it? Do you chop this tree and make it here? He makes it here. Interesting. And Hera tried to eject on this side, but he got stuck in the middle. It's a nice castle from Viper. It's going to cut off all this gold. His tower over here is still kind of cutting off the gold. On this side, and he could go for another tower here outside of the range of that castle. And just completely destroy any chance for Hera to take gold on this middle area. And then you're forcing Hera into either castle pushing your towers in the castle, which is terrible. You're going to be forced to go into rams, which are so easily counterable. Or you're forcing Hera to buy his way up to imp, which means he's going to have a fairly weak eco. So, really, really nice approach there from Viper. I'd love to see another tower maybe, like, over here. And I'd love to see him wall these in. That would be beautiful as well. Yeah, waiting for the stone, I think, is Viper. Knows he wants to cut off this gold, for sure. There we go. The other tower. There it is. That should be able to range the gold. Only thing I don't potentially like about this tower is I think if Hera gets Bodkin, he might be able to range that. We don't have the range indicators on because I think they're hideous. Um, but I think he could range it. And Hera's getting Bodkin. So for science, Hera, for science, we're going to figure out if this is a thing. Hera also building a siege workshop. That's not a good sign, folks. That tells me he's thinking about going for rams. For science? Hera, can you range this? He's he's currently attacking the castle. We need... He can! See? This is what 20 years of playing Age of Empires tells me. I don't need any range indicator, okay? I've got this. I know. Alright? And that's why Viper should have gone for the first tower I told him to go for. He's not listening. <laughs> The one over here, dude. <laughs> the one right over here. This one's fine, too. You can't range that one. Oh, no. <laughs> Going for rams. Oh, God. No, bro. Should have walled him in. 
Eagles are pressuring the tower and Harris called out uh, Harris kind of called out Viper. He's like, bro, you should have walled your towers in. Even stone gates over here. Nice little gated tower colony over on that side would be good. Hera now shows the Rams super early against an opponent that can make Chukunu. Rams are very underwhelming. Chukunu do quite well against Rams. You could also put a gate like behind here and a gate here and make a nice little gated community for those Chukunu to sit in so the Eagle can't range them. There we go. There's one. And, well, I think Viper will be quite comfortable behind this. Chukunu killing the Rams. Castle is being repaired. Behind this, Viper still has some holes into his base, and that's super unfortunate. But speaking of holes, I mean, Hera has massive gaps in his base, and Viper is using the mobility of his knights and his light cap to run around and snipe villagers. Eco Kitty is now 21 to 11 in favor of Hera as he managed to, I believe, wipe up the fish along the outside here for Viper, and he's also harassing this way, keeping a hole open for his eagles to come in. But Viper has gone for another dock over here, so he might be thinking about contesting those fish once again. Rams have died on this side. No surprise to anyone whatsoever. It was an ill-fated attempt going for those Rams against Chinese. Against any Civ with a castle in that situation, you could always out-repair and wait for a Meganol to come out. The Rams are toast. Especially against Chinese, though. As Viper now garrisons some of the villagers, losing a few along the way. But he's got Lightcap coming back. And, of course, his TC already has Bod Canero. It's going to be able to take care of some of those eagles. Chukanu are running away. Chukanu can find some great... Chuk points. <laughs> I was thinking of a Chukanu pun for choke point. I don't know. They can find some great spots to sit in. Very scenic in this area. And Hera will attempt his second siege workshop in this general vicinity over here. He's also got monks too. Aztec monks are pretty pog, but right now these monks have no upgrades. So being Aztec monks doesn't make a difference. Like have Knights still running in. Viper at 53 villas. Hera at 46. And Hera's eco is... Ooh, it's not looking good, folks. It's not looking good at all. Another Light Cav runs in. Hera's trying to block with the Eagle. The Light Cav does get converted. Wow. On the last stages of its attack animation, it gets converted. Chukunu now making their way over. Viper's looking for a way to set another tower in the center. And if you manage to cut Aztecs off of gold, like... Especially in Castle Age, what are they going to do? This sieve is nothing without gold. Absolutely nothing. And GG's called. Viper's played this map many times. Hera has as well, but I think Viper's probably more experienced here. And, I mean, that type of start with the Chinese, um, Viper's going to carry it home, especially after having the three towers in the center. Hera... Though, did have a really good castle age time. Um, he did push back the towers. He killed all of them. Got enough stone for that castle, so that was the correct play. I think the rams were a little bit of an overinvestment, and I think definitely walls would have helped on the sides. 100%. The knights and light cap don't come in. You don't have to worry about them at all. You can get away with walls just to block them off. And then maybe looking for some more opportunities in Viper's base. Like, he came in here once. He tried to come in here um, early castle age. But other than that, he was basically just responding to the pressure that Viper was applying, which you could have maybe you could have maybe prevented with some walls on the sides. But of course, that's way easier said than done, and Viper will take a win. And uh it's gonna be seven six. I mean <laughs> oh god, is this going to the twenty first game? <laughs> Am I gonna have to split this up? Oh no. <laughs> I mean, I would love it, but I gotta got to get up early tomorrow to cast the next best of 21. I don't even know what's coming up on Monday. And I got to, oh, and I got to process this video and upload it. Oh, man.
That's hours, by the way. Hours to process like a, a three hour video and upload it. Hours. Anyway. Aztecs loss. Chinese is a win. And Chinese, wow, managed to sneak down here to the third row for Viper. Crazy. Um, we look at the maps as well, and that is a win on El Dorado for Viper. Means a loss for Hera. Okay. So we go on to game 14. And this game is going to be played on Bay. And hell, it's a it's a great day for Bay. It really is. Bah, there we go. I have to restart Capture Age in between every game. If it's not the fire in the background, it's the fire in the middle. It's always something with this program, it seems like. There's always fire somewhere. Something's burning, you know? Anyway, welcome to Bay, a.k.a. Pants, also known as. And we have Hera playing as the Malay. We have a Viper playing as the Byzantines. This is a hybrid map. You really want to get the fish in the center here. You can see right now there's 1,800 food worth of fish. There's also a bunch of extra ibex and deer on the sides. But three tile golds. No, two tile stones. There's this little plateau up here which has some relics, has some stones, has some gold, has some wood. Very important to extend your control outwards towards all of these resources. But initially, the fight is going to revolve around the water. Now, Byzantines do have faster attacking fire galleys, but Malay, with the faster age up, should just win the water. Always. Here against Byzantines. Maybe the Byzantines can push back a little bit. But the Malay should have the advantage. And I think Viper knows that. He's going for a barracks forward. He's going for the classic kind of trash rush with Byzantines. He's gone for a few fishing ships initially. Hera will be uh, investing onto the water to take this out. And we can see Hera. Ooh, still only one dock. Doesn't see any of this, and he's still only one dock. So stretching out this way for the mill. Oh, no. What is Hera's plan here? He's investing wood into that mill. I, I think you should cancel that if you're Hera. And put it into a barracks or something. He doesn't even have a barracks, folks. And Viper is already coming in with a tower. And with some spearmen. And with some skirmishers. And Hera is only working well on his second fire galley. He only has one dock. So if Viper keeps building up fire galleys with Byzantines, he might even win the water. This is a really good start for Viper. The villagers are building the tower. Hera is working away on his, but Vipers will be significantly faster, and Hera is going to have problems. Viper still does not have an archer range to produce the skirmishers, so I guess that is a concern. It's just a very weird setup from both. It's like Hera wanted to go water, but he only made one dock? Which tells me he either knew Viper was going for this strategy... Or he knew Viper was just going to get greedy. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess. <laughs> and he thought he could get away with one dog. I mean, I guess knowing Viper is going to get greedy is... It's not that hard, right? It happens enough. Archer is now coming out from Viper. He's mining some stone, and where is he going to put the archers? Just inside the tower and then repair it? Remember, Hera does have five idle villagers in here, so it's something. Oh, <laughs> that's sick. Viper managed to take out two fire galleys with that fire's last dying gasp. And he's always going to win the 1v1 against Hera's fires. He's pulling it back anyway, but he's always winning the 1v1 with Byzantines. Always. Viper loses the tower. Simply goes for another one. On the berries. Is it still within range? Do my spidey senses tingle? I don't think it is. And it isn't. Once Hera gets fletching, it will be, though. Viper's just trying to deny these berries over here. He's also got archers running around here, too. 
good pressure for Viper. He's going to clear up the fish, too. And now, Viper's going to win the water. And he's got the land pressure here. Does Harry even have an archer range? He does not. He's just now adding an archer range, folks. His berries are going to be under fire from that tower from Viper. He's already used his stone for a defensive tower. And we look at the stone position. I mean, Viper is even taking his own stone. This is an awful spot for Hera. Just terrible. And Viper's not even making the trash composition. He's making archers. Like, these are units that can kill villagers. It's really, really rough. The only thing that can make this worse for Hera is if Viper knows that the deer are dead up here. I don't know if he can see this. I think you should be able to see this, right? Maybe he just didn't notice. He goes out for deer of his own. And uh, Hera finally has some skirmishers at the back here to defend. Viper kind of thinking about fletching. Hera already getting fletching. But Viper doesn't have a blacksmith yet. Yeah, he doesn't have a blacksmith, so he can't even go for that. Can go for some more fish, though. Maybe you don't want to do that if you see a flag on the dock from Hera. You don't know how much Hera's invested. You don't know how many ships are in here. Now you do. Peekaboo. Fletching probably needed here from Viper, though. In the meantime, Hera's still more villagers. Hera's still more farms. <laughs> like, this is just classic Hera defense, right? Everything seems bad, and then suddenly it's just not. Because he's so freaking good at the game. Reminds you of someone, doesn't it? It reminds you of another player. I can't quite think of his name. <laughs> it's, it's Viper. It's Viper. Spoiler alert. It's Viper. Peak Hera reminds me of Peak Viper. And that's a compliment. I think I think that's a compliment to both players, honestly. They're just both so good. Market being added from Hera. Maybe he can finagle that a little bit. Maybe try and get up quickly. However, Viper's still in a position where he's controlling most of the map. Hera does have villagers up here, which Viper... Uh, Feels like if he's still at his starting scout, he would have found those earlier, right? Now Viper goes for another tower. Is this a situation where Viper can starve Hera off of wood? Like, if he towers up this shit over here, and he towers up this stuff, <laughs> like, there's not that much back here. There is 3,300 back there. <laughs> Maybe Hera would just build a TC with these builds over here that Viper has no knowledge of, but still. Worrying times for Mr. Hera, that's for sure. And Viper still has enough stone for more towers. It's migrating a little bit over here. He's going to add a market of his own. And Hera has pushed back now with the fire galleys. Viper can clear this, though, with two of his own fire galleys. Byzantines? Yeah. Yeah, he can win this. Byzantine fire galleys are crazy. Demo is now coming out from Hera. I wonder if that demo is for the fires or for this. <laughs> Maybe a mix. As Viper now extends with this tower. If he gets a tower here, then he can safely go for a tower here. To cut off the gold in the wood. And then we're, once again, we're looking at this wood line from Hera. We're thinking things don't look too pleasant. In Hera's economy. Hera has kind of taken control of water once again, though. They're both kind of just half-heartedly fighting in this area. And Viper's going to win this 1v1, right? Even after getting hit by the demo. Or they're both just going to kill each other. Oh! 1 HP, bro! 1 HP. It's barely even floating. It's got holes in the hull. It's got worms eating away. At the decking. It's only held together by paint, spit, and hope. But she's still afloat. Yar. Not anymore. Bodkin arrow on the way for Hera. He needs to do something about these towers. Definitely. 
And if you're Viper going up to Castle HL, is like, is University Guard Tower a possibility? It's something to think about for sure. I think it's too expensive, but it's something to think about. It'll probably cross his mind as Hera goes for a TC up here. God, if if Viper had his starting scout, I think these are all dead, and I think Hera's in a much worse position than he is currently. Skirms are all dead now, so Hera comes across. He's got Bodkin Arrow Skirms, and there's no military at home for Viper. And he's still 50 seconds away from Castle Age. Don't underestimate these Skirms, folks. Bodkin Arrow on these. Each one of these has four attack. <laughs> it's like a base archer. Imagine nine base archers showing up in your eco with minimum range. Okay. He, sh he has one scout. He should be fine. <laughs> and he's getting the armor too. He's going to be okay. He's going to be okay. Tower has been taken out over here. Hera will go for his stable. And Viper's going to be able to clear all this stuff. And Viper's trying to clear this dock too. Finally. These docks have uh, they've taken a beating. Even bringing the fire over here. And now the skirmishers are going to get roasted. See, this army doesn't do that much for Hera, but it made him feel like he had an army. It made him feel like it, and I think it made Viper feel like he couldn't go for this castle. But now Viper can go for this castle, and Viper has only four villagers building this castle. Elephants are coming out from Hera. And we just wonder, is this enough villagers to complete this? Viper is sending three more. The elephants are on the way. The skirmishers are still here with Bodkin Arrow, I might add. As Viper now goes for a gate and a wall over here. Trying to deal with these elephants. Viper has found this. See, as soon as he has a scout, it's all fine. He finds it right away because it's Viper. Of course he's going to be scouting those areas. But he didn't have the means to find it earlier. And it was a great play from Hera to just keep drawing these villagers away and then get safe access to a gold and a wood line over on this side. However, that becomes an immediate target for Viper now. And this castle is beautiful, right? It cuts off the wood line. It cuts off the gold over here. We can see the towers now being dealt with by Hera because he needs access to wood. And it, those towers basically forced him into elephants, which is a unit he probably just doesn't want to make at this stage of the game. However, he does have 25 on food, and Hera just doing Hera things, right? 25 farms. 25 farms. Viper's on 16. Hera's just doing his things, just constantly adding more farms, getting his food eco up. Viper will be adding in a few cataphracts, just because he can. And uh, Viper's going to be thinking about pushing this area, and Viper actually sells his stone now. Interesting. Sold his stone for what? So he could buy wood. Right. We don't know what it was for, but... Interesting decision for sure. Hera will go for another TC up here. Viper, Viper's going to be pushing this area. Now, the concern for Hera is that his eco is going to be super split. And now he's going for a third TC. Like, he is ahead on villagers right now. But it also costs a lot to expand your eco. It's not just the extra resources the villagers are giving you. If you want to keep producing from three TCs, keep making farms everywhere, keep making uh, repairs happen if Viper's attacking this with a mangonel or going for towers or whatnot to defend yourself, it's going to cost a lot, right? It's going to delay you a ton. Having your TC split like this is not the best thing. As Viper just places that tower one tile outside of the range. Continuing to be annoying. And there's another TC from Hera. Hera's kind of like, he's in the boom or die game mode. 
as his archers and skirmishers now come over again. Mangonel already working away on this CC. Not really many options here for Hera to deal with those as the monks come forward. Hera's going to try and snipe these with the archers, and he does. Still four archers left over, too, so Viper has to respect that when he's sending his monks forward. And this is exactly what we knew would happen. Nice attack rounds there from Viper on the villagers. Doesn't have any repair villagers, though. Accidentally killed the one. He converted, and Hera is trying to wall this monk in, and Hera gets the monk. Hera gets the monk, folks. Sick. <laughs> is it worth it? We don't know. He gets the monk. He loses a few villagers in the process. Another monk out here from Viper. That's a converted elephant, unless Hera... Manages to delete it, and Viper was blocking the villagers and the elephant with the knight. He converts the elephant. He saves the mangonel. Great play there from Viper, and on the other side, he's also gone for a tower over here to cut off this gold. Remember, Hera's already cut off gold on this side. He's cut off gold over here. Hera somehow has five on gold, and it's right here where that other TC was. He's now making some rams, too. Is he going to try and push down this castle? Once again, not sure if that's the best idea in Castle Age. But he definitely needs to try and clear his golds, right? Definitely needs to try and do that. 88 villagers for Hera, 8 in the queue. 63 villagers for Viper. And he's pushing out again. So if you're a villager watcher, and I know there's a lot of those out there, say like, oh, he's not ahead. Look, the other guy has 15 more villagers. How could he possibly be ahead? I would still argue that Viper is ahead in this in this game. Stable coming up from Viper. Another one. Monks are back here, so Hera needs to be very careful with the elephants. And when you have a group of elephants like this, you don't know which one he's converting. Right? So you, you can't delete on demand. If you're going to delete two elephants, you got to delete the whole group. So things are getting a little bit hairy here for Hera. A little bit hairy for Hera? like it. Second TC now being added from Viper. Camel's being added in as well. Light Caver coming forward. Hera knows the attack round is coming. He jukes around that. And it is a lot of Light Cav. A couple of them are weak. But these guys are coming in for the monks. And Viper loses one monk. He loses both of those Mangonels. So Hera's done a fantastic job. He's like... 105 villagers starting to get out of control here enough stone for a castle too like the eco is still being harassed here but viper's gonna need to show some uh something else to really kill off hera hera goes for a castle defensively viper is still trying to convert the light cav 37 on food from Hera. Viper behind has not done the best job. Adding in Farmiinko, he's trying to do it now. And the problem for him is that very soon, Hera will be in a position where he's going to have enough light cap to come forward and kill this stuff at Viper's base. And it feels like a couple good engagements have just kind of swung this in Hera's favor, right? Viper can never really find many conversions with the monks. Hera was there with the light cap to snipe them. Viper couldn't really find an opportunity to kill this CC, and maybe I should be a villager watcher. Maybe I should be a villager watcher now, too, because Hera has recovered really nicely. He's on the way to Imperial Age. He's going to be able to tread down this castle, get access to this gold once again, get access to this wood line once again. Viper selling wood, selling food, and he's on the way to Imperial Age himself. Now, he almost has enough stone for another castle. Where do we put it? Do we go up here with the castle? Do we go over here with the castle? Do we go at home with the castle? Are we over here with the castle? We don't know. There's another one from Hera over here. Imperial Age. 
bridge has been reached from Hera. 78 villagers for Viper. It's not a terrible economy behind, but it's not great. And he didn't add any fishing ships throughout this entire process. You know, that would have helped him a lot, I think. I don't know if he didn't have the wood for it, or maybe he didn't feel like they were very safe. But, in, you know, instead of adding farms, which take up a villager's time, adding the fish while you're still producing bills from your TCs could be really, really nice. And here come the light cavern. This was the concern for Viper, right? All of his pressure was forward. Light cavern now going to be in his base. He's going to retreat back here. And he is going to harass up at the top here as he goes for a castle in the middle. Oh, what do we do against this Viper? What on earth do we do against this? I guess we run. I guess we simply run here. Camels are going to come back to try and deal with the light cav. The light cap are faster than the camels. And there's only four camels. And now it's Viper's turn to lose some villagers. Eco Kitty was in his favor. I think Hera's going to even that out fairly soon. We got the elephants over here. Really hate that mill. The elephants do, anyway. I don't have any feelings towards it, particularly. Viper now gets the imp. What is the solution here, Mr. Snake? Still have good map control over on this side. All the way through the center. You have really good vision on what Hera's up to because you're Byzantines. Right? Like, Viper can see the basically like the whole map here. And you definitely have the better tech tree than Malay definitely have the better tech tree so if you drag this out late you're gonna be fine it's just how do you get yourself into that late game scenario arbalist on the way or sorry crossbow chemistry also blast furnace on the way from Hera I think dude if you have that much food and gold like just karambits right you have so much res in the bank Karambits until you're full pop. You get all of the armor upgrades for free. You're getting Blast Furnace right now. Send him into the eco from Viper. I don't know why Hera is saving so much res. I don't understand. I guess he wants to wait for the Arbalest tech to come in. But there's so much you can be doing here in the interim with that 2,000 food. So much food. From Hera, like just a couple Karambits. Not even a cup. Make 50. Send them in. I know we can make a couple uh, cataphracts, but still. It's going to be elephants from Hera. Still a ton of food in the bank. As he gets all of the upgrades here for Arbalist. I think Hera's thinking a little bit too much towards his late game solutions. He's got a window here where he can kill Viper before Viper gets his eco cut up. Credit to Hera, though. I mean, that was a crazy hold. One, two, three, four castles all set up in a line here. He's managed to push back all of the stuff from Viper. And now he's advancing with the elephants. And we, we're looking at Viper's base. Viper, he's going to try and add barracks. He's still trying to get all of his techs in here for the skirmishers. The eco is just not enough to keep up with the tech switches he wants to do right now. Maybe a, like, uh, I guess you can't wall here, can you? So the shallows. Yeah, Viper's just going to whittle down the Arbalest number while he can. Karambits, just do it. Okay, that makes sense. Elite battle elephant on the way. I would have loved to see some Karambits, though. Maybe you can't tell. But, like, 30 Karambits going into this area of Viper's eco. Oh, boy. Could have cost so much damage, especially with Blast Furnace already on the way in. Didn't even have to be elite. Bombard Cannon, already out from Viper. Gonna be trying to work away on these traps, but the elephants are extremely intimidating. And right now, Viper only has Pikemen. Malay elephants are not the greatest, right? 
They don't get the, the second armor upgrade. We all understand. They're not amazing. But they are cheap. They are cheap. And elite battle elephants are pretty destructive regardless of what Civ is using them. Elite is in now. Viper is saving up for Hal, but he needs to keep the pikeman production going. Castle does have more HP with Byzantines, and some of the elephants are currently dying, along with a lot of those arbalists. The castle has taken out quite a few of the arbalists. Viper has been manually targeting those. You can see this castle with already 13 kills on it. And it's cost Terra quite a bit to take this out, actually. Siege Engineer is on the way for Hera, too. Halberdier is on the way in. Halberdier will change the complexion of these fights. If Viper has enough of them. They do a lot better against Elephants than regular Pikemen do, and Halb is in now. If Viper has enough of them. Currently, he has four, eight, ten. <laughs> Elephant converted. Traps are pushing forward. We still have 110 villagers here from Viper. What is, why, why am I feeling like this is a possibility? I don't know. It shouldn't be, right? Harris should win this game. Look at the position he's in. He should win this, but I'm feeling like there's potential. And I don't know why. Maybe my spidey senses are telling me something. Maybe I'm completely wrong and Viper's about to GG because he only has 45 food in the bank. But who knows? Viper does have enough stone for another castle. It's at 135 pop. Here is pop count. 17 elephants in the queue. He's finally sending elephants over here. But Viper is coming forward with the skirms and Viper is targeting the arbalist. If he gets rid of all the arbalists, the hub should be able to take care of the elephants. As we see Viper shifting some halves over here to deal with these. Hera is trying to go for this castle, but Viper is going to take out that treb, so that's nice. And Viper calls the GG. Well played from Hera. Great hold from Hera. Did not expect him to win this game after Viper got the commanding position over here. Maybe I should be a Vill Watcher. Maybe I should be a Vill Watcher more often. Maybe. Um, I think it's probably just a better practice to be watching the farm count, which I was doing most of the game. Usually the player who's adding farms faster is going to be able to take control, and that's usually Hera. Really great job. Viper, maybe should have added the second TZ a little bit earlier. Maybe should have gone for the fish a little bit earlier to catch up an eco. I think he knew he was behind economically the whole time, but he still felt like he was in a decent position with the towers and whatnot. So we'll see. Anyway, Hera takes a win there. 8-6 to six in favor of Hera in this best of 21. He only needs three more wins. And look at that eco. Oh, my God. Look at the food collected. Damn, dude. That's, uh, that's fairly convincing. We'll mark down the Civ win there for Malay, and we'll mark down the loss here for the Byzantines, and we will be going for a loss on Bay. There we go. 8-6 to six in favor of Hera. And now we try to go into the next game here. Uh, Game 15. Cool. Game 15. It's going to be on Valley. Once again, we'll speed up through this the beginning of the game. I apologize. I know you don't love to watch pigs get killed in, in quick speed, but like I said, kind of want some sleep tonight. So. Hera playing as the Britons, Viper playing as the Mongols, and... Like I was mentioning before in some of the previous games we watched on Valley, I mean, the old meta was to come out for the hunt and contest the hunt. And that's exactly what Viper is going to do with the Mongols. That's why you pick Mongols on this map. Going to come out here. There's also Shorefish out here. The last time Hera played this, um, he let Yo have full control over the hunt. And he did exactly this with the Vietnamese. He walled up. <laughs> And just tried to make it work and tried to play without the hunt. So I think he's still convinced. That's a good 
uh, strategy. We'll see if the Britons can do it better than the Vietnamese because Yo absolutely fleeced him <laughs> the last time around, right? Took full map control, forward castles, everything like that. We thought there was a moment Hera might come back, but there simply wasn't as we go back to normal speed. Viper is going to be trying to find his way into this incredibly big fully walled base over here from Hera. And Viper, I mean, Viper can just come forward with more bills, right? Viper's never afraid of that. Taking advantage of the resources that his opponent gives him. And the food collected here at the end of the at the end of this stretch, once Viper's done with all these deer, is gonna be insanely in favor of the Mongols. Scout archer composition here from viper as the spearman rolls on over sorry it's a villager this time rolls on over from hera in addition to his starting scout he's gonna try and clear this scout from viper and i think the important thing for viper here is not to necessarily worry about your uptime versus the britons it'll come like if you're taking this hunt your uptime will come in at a relatively similar time even if Hera is just full walling here going into limited military. I think the key for Viper, just keep producing units in Feudal Age. So Hera can never sneak around and kill your, your villagers on the center. You have all this free food that you can take advantage of. Keep the skirms or the archers or the scouts or the spearmen or whatever coming out. And keep an eye on Hera's base and track the movement of his army. You're going to be fine. You don't even need walls at home. Because you're going into a lot of production and you're going to have more Fudiko than he is. Hera has gone for a Spearman and he's now trying to lame the deer. And when we double click the deer to see how many are left, well, he's got some work to do because there's 30, <laughs> 31 deer left. <laughs> you got some work to do, my little bro. Got some work to do. Scout's still running around Hera's base, too. Giving him a piece of his own medicine. As Viper will now start working away on these walls, too. Hera just working on producing archers at the back. He's got double fit axe, does not have horse collar yet, and Viper is now getting the armor. Is Viper interested in pushing in? Is he going to go... <gasps> Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Show a path for me. <laughs> That's a straggler tree, bro. Hera, this is Age of Empires 101, my dude. You can't just let... You can't just wall to a tree, my bro. You cannot. That's why Viper's getting the armor. He saw the tree. And Hera's going to be like, uh, <laughs> maybe this strategy on Valley that I have come up with is not conducive to a victory. <laughs> Chi -chi I blame, I blame the tree in every possible sense. That tree was a traitor. It should have never been there. <laughs> I refuse to acknowledge it. This tree shall be struck from the record. If I was Hera, anyway. Yeah, that's... Uh, I don't think the strategy was going to work anyway. It's very clear that Hera either uh, is not very interested in playing out this map or firmly believes that this is the best strat against an opponent who has drafted Mongols here. Uh, but I think he's going to need to refine it a little bit because even if Viper doesn't chop his way through that tree... It's still, it's still going to be so tough, right? Like, Viper can just go for outposts around your base. He can just patrol scouts around your base. You're never getting out. Even if you get up to Castle Age faster, Viper's not going to be that far behind. He's going to have more military, blah, 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 blah. That wasn't a very entertaining game. We go on to the next one. It's funny. Many of Viper's wins have just been so quick. Like, almost every win he's got in this series has <laughs> the fish and fish game. You remember that? There was also some really early GG's. The arena game from Harry. GG'd before his forward castle even went down. Uh, this one, when Viper chopped in. There's been some super quick ones. As Viper now has seven wins. And we will mark that down as a win. A loss on Valley. That was Harry's home map. Ooh. Ugh. 
and a win for Mongols, and Viper picked them that early for a reason. I wonder if you feel, if you're a Viper there, do you feel like your Mongols pick was just wasted because you got in on a straggler tree? Or are you thinking, yeah, he had to wall like that because I'm too good? I don't know. Here we are, Golden Swamp, Harris. I think number two pick was the Vikings. We're going to speed it up four times again. Get us up to live time. Koreans for Viper, Vikings for Hera. And, uh, well, Hera has shown in the past that he likes to go into galley pressure on this map and then go into longboats later. Get enough galleys to just snipe the fish. Or maybe control the water if you can. It takes good engagements early. And then he'll try and uh, try and go into the longboats. Viper has done that in the past as well. I'm just interested to see how Viper plays this with Koreans. Because Koreans will be spending... They will be spe spending less wood, excuse me, on the ships. Um, but Viking ships are still very cheap. And their docks are cheaper too. And Vikings should still be favored on water. Also, they probably still have the best eco bonus in the game. Free wheelbarrow, free handcart, right? So even if you're just stalemating them on water, their economy on land is going to be better than yours. And Viper is going to need to do something drastic to pressure Hera. Now on this Golden uh, Swamp variant, they are actually quite close together. Usually they're on like opposite sides of the map, but we can see there's not that much distance between them. And I wonder if Viper has found Hera. He has not. Has Hera found Viper? He is just now finding him, but you can see he went out this way. Because he was thinking, ooh, guy's probably on the other side of the map. As Viper now opens fire galleys. So he's going to open with a couple fires, and he's going to go galleys behind them. That's become more popular lately. For a while there, it was just all fire galleys. You never see the galleys added in until, like, War Galley or Galleon later in the game. Um, then it was just all galleys. You wouldn't see the fires added in. And now... A bit of a mix is what players favor, it feels like. We've seen this multiple times. The fire galleys are good against really low numbers of uh, galleys from your opponent, and they're always going to get chip damage, which means then your galley reinforcements can come along and start taking out these ships with just a few hits. Blacksmith also coming in for Viper. I'm going to loop on over here and see what I mean. Just chip damage all over the place, right? Less than half HP on this guy. Probably going to be half HP on this guy when this fire is done. We got some damage on the other ones. And there's galleys coming out for Viper. And when you're microing galleys back and forth, damage like this does matter. However, if you're in Harris' position, the fact that Viper went for fire galleys here means that you will have the galley production advantage. Viper's galleys are over on this side. So he's looping around. He's trying to kill the fish from Hera. Hera didn't have any fish. He didn't make any fish. He just went up, which is why he was in Feudal Age faster. There's no fish for Viper to snipe. And Viper's about to find that out. However, there is a galley for him to snipe. Meanwhile, at home, Hera going for some walls over here. Taking the deer, taking the berries, still migrating against these two galleys from Viper. And Viper's trying to build up his forces just a little bit as Hera has his navy over here. And now Viper has completely cut production on galleys. So maybe he's going to try and go for a market or something, get his way up to the next age. I don't know. I wonder what the strat is here for Koreans. Like, do you want to do early pressure? Probably. You want to get a castle down somewhere good like maybe here or something you can build on this terrain and like lock down the water completely and play into the late game or what's the plan i know in the in the super late game korean towers are gonna do really well here and maybe even turtle ships i mean turtle ships have been improved i don't think they've been improved to the point where you can actually feasibly produce a, a ton of them in castle age maybe one or two but maybe in the late game now, maybe they'll be uh, super powerful. Who knows? If we do go to super late game, Koreans should be favored with their tech tree. 
That is one weakness of the Vikings. Their late game tech tree is mm, underwhelming. And Viper hits the market first, and Viper's going to go up first. Hera hits the market now, though. His ego is looking okay, and remember, he does have Wheelbarrow throughout this entire process. Viper's resources are higher, though, in terms of total gathered res. I think Hera will start to catch up. Remember, Viper had the three fishing ships working away earlier, so that's definitely going to help. Also, you use the market a little bit more, and that does show up in the collected res category. And yeah, it's, it shifts back over to Hera now that he's sold a little bit. Castle Age on the way for both. It's a little under a minute ahead for Viper. And Hera's working away on the docks. Now, if you're Viper and you're in Hera's position with the galleys, right? You're worried about... Um, your opponent going for longboats. Sorry, I, I didn't phrase that correctly. If you're against Vikings, let's say this was Viper with the galleys, and he was against Vikings, and he was taking out a dock. You're worried about your opponent going for these little side docks, right? And, and massing up longboats. Viper's still going to go for the side docks. He's still going to try and contest water, but you don't have to worry about the longboat stack coming out. And turtle ships are just... They're just too expensive. Is he going to make them? Oh my god. Here they come. Here they come. Hera's going to be have, having nightmares about turtle ships on this map. There was a famous game between him and Yo. Where Yo had turtle ships. And Hera said, I believe five monks... It's actually the background image. Uh, Red Bull did a dramatization. They, you know, they uh, got an artist to do a dramatization of that scene because it was so famous in Red Bull 2. And I remember calling it with Nilly uh, of the monks dying. And I think it was five monks dying to one turtle ship because he sent them one at a time. Monks are a good option to turtle ships if you have like two of them. If you just have one of them, <laughs> ask Hera. <laughs> Turtle ships are doing pretty well for now, though. Viper only needs two of them, though. And Hera's trying to micro against this. I don't know. These longboats are looking a little bit underwhelming. These galleys certainly didn't do anything. Turtle ship has six range. Longboats have eight. Oh, boy. That turtle will never be able to catch up to these things if Hera's microing correctly. Behind this, though, Viper, I mean, he's gone for two additional TCs. I guess the turtle ships are expensive, but they're also really, really good. And he only had to make two of them to make an impact. And that meant that he could go for the town centers. Hera <laughs> Hera's trying to micro against this. He hasn't dodged a single shot. <laughs> Too many clicks, my friend. Too many clicks, Hera. Just run away. They're slow as balls. Look at this thing. Is it even... Like, they're not even rowing. So slow. 0.9 speed. It's a little bit faster than a villager without wheelbarrow. Nice. Three turtle ships now. Okay, okay, and I guess if longboats stack up with the splash damage that turtle ships do, we could be seeing some nice little kills here from Viper. I mean, there is potential, right? And now he's coming forward for a uh, TC in the middle, or is it going to be towers? It's going to be towers, guys. Turtle ship towers. The good old TT. And this is Hera's second Civ selected overall. So he put a lot of faith in the Vikings on Golden Swamp. A ton of faith. Let's see if it was warranted. He sees the villager now. Gonna be coming forward with the monk. <laughs> I wonder if Hera's thinking, like, oh, this is eerily familiar. <laughs> I remember what happened with my monks last time. Oh, God. Not again. Please. 
He is charging up against these vills though, and now the monk is out of faith. So the turtle ships might be able to kill that. Looks like Viper goes for a gate to block the monk so the tower can fire on it. It doesn't work though. And Hera is now running away with the uh, longboats once again. Viper does get the tower up though, and he can start slowly making his way forward with these towers. <laughs> Good thing he didn't kill his own foundation. I don't know if turtle ships can do friendly fire damage. I don't think they can attack ground. I don't think they can. I know they changed that on a lot of things though. What can do friendly fire? I don't think Trebs used to be able to, but they can now. Um, Cannon Galleons never used to be able to either. And the market is being shot down. More towers being added for Viper. Hera needs to do something about this. This could get concerning quite quickly. Especially with the economy going on here for Viper. 70 villagers for him. It's 56 for Hera, but he does have hand cars. So when we look at the resources collected, Hera is still ahead. And now he's trying to push back the turtle ships here with the monks, but the towers are encroaching. And monks are not very good against towers at all. And another tower. Just a constant line of towers here from Viper. Fletching coming in. He can afford Bodkin as well. A wheelbarrow coming in for him as well. Hera's thinking about a castle. But with all of these towers here. If you want to get a castle in the middle. You're going to have to get pretty creative. For you, where you want to put it. Especially with the turtle ships involved too. And the tower is going to be up just in time. Take a look at this from Hera's perspective. He sees a tower here and a tower here. He doesn't know, but the other do. <laughs> it's probably like, oh, that's cute. Look, you made a tower here. Haha. -ha. I'll just go castle over here once I've cleared all the turtle ships. Maybe he could get away with like a castle here. Maybe he could pressure Viper if he thinks he'll be up to uh, Imperial Age first. Hmm. Stable being added from Viper. Not something you see all that often with Koreans. Get some light cab on the field to deal with the monks, potentially. Also want a castle if you're Viper, right? Wow, these longboats are doing really well against this tower. Oh my goodness. He did shots coming in from Viper. Those Logboats were doing some serious damage there. Oh my god. Plus seven attack against buildings. Damn, dude. And Imperial Age is on the way first for Viper. Also on the way for Hera. Viper definitely needs Bod Canero. Definitely needs a castle. Probably wants Yupsion. For the towers as well to give him extra range. Probably wants Ballistics as well. Like, the wish list for Viper... It has a lot of things on it. And Hera is coming forward for that castle. I thought it might be a good idea. We'll see how it pans out for him. Viper will simply go for the castle in the center with three villagers. And that means he won't have enough uh, stone for the castle back here. Does has a, have a scout now to uh, tag along with his turtle ships. But the monks are going this way from Hera. Now, the only problem for Hera here is he doesn't really have anything to run inside of Viper's base, right? He's going to have a castle. He's going to have Trebs behind. He's going to be ranging stuff. But I think Viper will simply go for chemistry. Uh, bomber cannons to defend. And then maybe um, hand cannons at home, potentially. Still has access to the middle, right? Eventually, Hera will run out of gold, especially if there's turtle ships. Just kind of chilling here. Nice. Great gate there from Hera. Viper forced to delete the scout and forced to run away with these turtle ships. Really, really nice touch there. And it's a, it's another tower in defense from Viper. That's not the MTC, by the way. That's a handcart TC. MTC is here. 
he gets to Imperial Age first. I think Hera will be surprised by that. Oh, no! Oh, no! Hang on a second. Instant replay brought to you by I don't know, but it's important. Hera attempted to go for a castle over here. He attempted to go for a castle. He had the stone invested. He builds it with one villager. She dies, and then the castle dies. We are going to get a slow motion replay on this bad boy. This villager is coming in, and she's coming in hot. And the castle gets hit to 3 HP! Oh my god, 3 HP on the castle. Absolute tragedy. An absolute tragedy over here. Hera had no idea there was a castle there for Viper. And now he knows about all of the towers and the castle. And he sees that he can't really push over here. And he saw that Viper was up first. And Viper has access to Bombard Cannons, which he doesn't have. Things are not looking good for Hera. 90 villagers against 94. And there's no handcart advantage anymore. That's gone. Viper has handcart himself. Viper also has three relics. Viper is playing at a very high level here on this game. Yupsion coming in now, too. I'm sure I'm butchering that pronunciation. I'm sure someone will correct me. Well, actually. <laughs> Tower is going down. It's killing the Trev really slowly. But it'll die. And chemistry is now in. So that means hand cannons. That means uh, bombard cannons. Longboats are being massed. Hera still wants many of these to deal with the three turtle ships from Viper or just to deal with any land military from Viper as well. I mean, they, they are quite good against buildings, quite good against land units. The unfortunate thing for Hera is that I, I don't think they're that good against the towers once they're fully upgraded, and the towers are kind of fully upgraded right now. So the turtle ships tried to make a difference. <laughs> That's all that matters, right? They tried. Trebs are in a very vulnerable position here. Viper is going to be attacking them. He'll take out this trap for sure. Pack round in the middle here. Mm, doesn't quite get it. Takes out one. Hera's going to be packing these up. And Viper's going to attempt to take out another. And in the meantime... Well, Hera is over here with the longboats. I mean, a Viper is just moving out this way. I'm I'm curious why Hera has so many longboats and he's not even sending any of them over here. He's not trying to cut off Viper at all. Is he it is he convinced that Viper is going to have towers here? Does he think Viper is going to build up a, a massive navy here? I don't know. I mean, this is just the corridor of death, right? I don't think you want to come in here with your longboats at all. You can see Hera just lost probably six or seven units with that one little run there. He is able to protect the trebuchets, though, and the bombard cannons, well, they're going to be working on that castle. They can't come over here and snipe these trebs because of the longboat presence on this side. And the berserks are going to be working away on this bombard cannon, too. Viper does not manage to save it. Over on this side, Longboat's still trying to come in. Not too much HP on those things. Bombard Cannons trying to work away on them. But the Trebs are still active, and the Trebs are still sniping down this castle. Once this castle goes down, maybe the Longboats can dive in and hit the Bombard Cannons. Have to be careful, though. The way the Longboats stack, a couple precise attack rounds for Viper could change the name of the game for sure. Maybe this is smart from Hera. Maybe he needed to mass the longboats, right? Because then the Trebs can take out everything. And there's nothing here from Viper that can do anything about it. Over on this side, Viper, is he making more bomber cannons? Looks like he is, but I think that they're forward. Which they are as he works away on this Treb and this castle over here. Don't think he has any more bomber cannons in defense. No. 
Treb goes down. Castle is being worked away on. Gold access for Hera is very limited. Very, very limited. But the Trebs are still working away on the towers and Viper. Well, he doesn't really have a follow-up army over here. He's got like four hand cannons. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Viper. Uh-oh. Here come the longboats. Is it uh-oh, Viper, or is it uh-oh, Hera? Oh, look at the longboats die, guys. Oh, my God, dude. Oh, my God. The longboats are dying at a ferocious pace. Is it worth it to snipe all of these bombard cannons? Oh, my God. Heated shot. Bombard cannons. The towers. Oh, man. Man, Hera just lost so many longboats, but it might be worth it. The pressure is no longer on over here. No bombard cannons, just some hand cannons and some towers. That's it. Holy, did he ever lose a lot of longboats there? He's going to lose some more. Oh, my God, dude. 35 kills on these towers already, and there's more coming in. Oh, my goodness. But it's worth it. Look at Viper's base. Nothing happening. What's going on in the middle? Not too much. What's going on over here? Nothing important. Hera is just throwing away units. As you can see from the KD, 122 to 50 in favor of Viper. But he doesn't care, right? The units are buying him time. They're buying him space. They're buying him gold access. And Viper is forced to redock over here, and he's going for more towers. Viper does still have access to stone, apparently. He's still on stone right now. So he's going to go for some more towers. And I wonder what navy he chooses to go for. Does he go for turtle ships here, or does he go for galleons? I think the smart play would be galleons. The fun play would definitely be turtles. <laughs> and you can see Viper going for some more fun plays over here. Towers, ranges, taking out the trap. Oh, God, here he comes again. <laughs> Aaron's like, nah, maybe not. <laughs> maybe I don't want to send my longboats over to die again. Viper is just, has not made any military on uh, water either. Like, yeah, other than those three turtles early, no ships whatsoever. Villagers are over here, kind of expanding. This TC is going to go down from Hera. Still only 101 villagers from Hera. 142 pop. Like, it's not that far ahead in population. And Trebs keep going down on this side, too. Viper expanding his farm eco. Food eco for Hera. We were talking about that the other day. Uh, uh, blah, blah, sorry. The other game. How Hera loves to expand his food eco and does such a good job with it. 22 place farms. That's it. And he's only on 16 of them, right? Viper's already 32 farms. And he's taking out the castle. And Viper's mounting a, a comeback. A little pushback here onto the center. Great game on uh, Golden Swamp. Hera finally getting his Fudiko under control. But that's kind of because Viper's cutting it off. He's forced to remake it over here. Still has all of these longboats. But it's only, surely it's only a matter of time before he sends them into more towers. Oh, God. Oh, if he stacks up here, Viper can get some great shots with the bomber kit. Look at this stack from there. Can Viper see this? Oh, he can't. Oh, my God, dude. Viper, don't. No, Viper, no. No. Don't break my heart like this, Viper. No, you had a chance. Oh, my God. He's busy. He's busy. He's busy other places. We can forgive him. <laughs> He's busy other places. Entertaining game for sure. Hand cannons now coming over here. Oh, so many weak fills. Does this TC even go up? Oh, does this thing even go up? Does this bad boy even complete is the question. We've got monks converting from over here. Viper's still pressuring from this side. Viper, I mean... Damn, dude, he took control of the middle first, and then he just gives it up like it means nothing to him. And he's in the middle of Hera's base. He's got towers here. He's taking out the castle. Hera is now selling his life to buy food? 
for the gold mining upgrade. Nice. Castle goes down. 132 pop for Hera. Second armor upgrade coming for the cavalry for Viper. And Viper is just laughing. He's going for more stone at the back here. He's still pushing with the bomber cannons. More traps will go down. And Hera is going to be in a situation where he's just going to have to buy everything. Right? 58 villagers on gold in the center here. We've seen this before. We've seen this on other maps where there's gold in the center. One player is in the center. All on gold. And they're just using the market to buy food and wood. The other player is around the edges of the map taking food and wood. But they have no gold. But suddenly, because of the relationship with the market, this player makes the food play price very reasonable to sell. And this guy has access to gold via selling food or se selling wood. So... It is a uh, tumultuous relationship between the two of them. And there Viper goes, selling some wood right there. And he's going to get access to plenty of gold. Because he simply has more villagers on the outside. Collecting food and collecting wood. And Viper even taking stone. Since when did stone generate in the shallow... Areas? <laughs> don't know. <laughs> On the flip side of that relationship I talked about, though, it doesn't only benefit Viper. Also does benefit Hera, because every time Viper sells, the prices will get more reasonable for Hera. So both players are kind of keeping each other involved in the game, as we see Hera now buying food for 122 gold. And he's just trying to do something on land with Vikings. Also coming out here for wood. It's never a good sign. <laughs> when you are making a lumber camp at the front of your opponent's base. <laughs> hand cannons. Converted hand cannons. Being forced down there. There's still some berserks here from Hera, but uh, Viper's not too concerned about those. He's going to be taking out the Trebs. He still has full control over the main base here from Hera. He's stretching out over here as well, continuing to expand his farm eco, and Hera is now making a tech switch into Cavalier. And he's got six of them already, and he's got plenty of stables in the center. He's not going to run out of gold anytime soon. He's just going to be buying that food. Zero on food, and my man is going Cavalier, and how is he doing it? He's smashing that market. As Viper now responds with barracks of his own. Crazy game, dude. What is happening here? We've had everything. A denied castle. 3 HP. Lost all the stone. Middle full of towers. Turtle ships. Taken back. Longboat stack. Lost two towers. Forward villagers up inside of his base with towers. Man zero on food making 20 plus cavalier. With Vikings. <laughs> Literally everything. You love to see it. TC. Second TC in the center here from Herod. Nothing is left of his base. Another TC over here on the side. And Viper is now going into docks. As uh, he makes a switch into Pikeman and Hal. Only Spearman for the time being. Doesn't want to be selling his resources for gold, really. You can see he's been... Pretty patient with it because he realizes that uh, that will make things easier for Hera. As Hera is now buying food for 166 gold. A pop. Viper adding another TC and another TC. And we got some more docks. As Pikeman comes in. Cavalier are doing some good work over here though. Viper is down to 102 villagers. But Hera can only sustain this Cavalier pressure for so long, right? He's hoping that he can kick Viper out of the game. He can maybe gain some access to some more wood uh, over on the sides. If he makes some TCs over here. Important to note as well that Viper has three relics. He used to have four. I don't know where that fourth one went. But he does have three relics through the, throughout this. So he does have some gold generation of his own. Hera's buying food for 187. And he uses it to queue up more Cavalier. 
four on food right now. How much gold is left? 19.9k. I mean, at the rate he's buying. <laughs> at the rate that he's buying. It's not going to last for very long. 19.9k is nothing. Absolutely nothing. Peanuts. 97 villagers only for Viper. This Cavalier Tech Switch has really accomplished a lot, honestly. There's the Monastery from Viper. He's going to take out the Monastery from Hera. He's going to get this Relic. We still have to find out where that other Relic is. Ah. I see. I guess Viper moved his Monastery back. And he's making a Monk to grab it. Classic. Also has 20 Pikemen now. And Pikemen should... I mean, even without armor upgrades... Even without the Halberdier upgrade, they should do okay against Viking Cavalier. No final armor upgrade. No bloodlines. Doesn't even have Blast Furnace on them. Like, they should do okay. Like, have also raiding on this side. Halberdier coming in. And the Halberdier are also going to do pretty well against the ships from Hera. I think, like, Viper has made... I think he made three docks over here at one point. Two docks here. Three docks here. Actually, no. It was two docks over here. I think he's made seven docks without making a single ship. Since he lost the initial uh, two docks that he had early in the game. <laughs> he's made so many docks without making a single ship or getting a single tech for his ships. Harris says, sorry, go. So I guess I had a pause at some point. We are watching Rex. Once again, I don't know the result here. I think it's going to go deep at this rate, though. I see Viper winning this game, and then we're at 8-8. Eight to eight. Like, oh my, Lanza. Final wood upgrade coming for Viper. What a wild game. Just take a look at the minimap right now. Just look at it. Just examine it. Don't have to examine it closely. Just a cursory look. Hera's base is gone. Wiped from the face of the earth. Uh, earth. Covered in towers. Desolate. Hera is literally farming on the middle area. And Viper controls everything on the outside. Bomber cannons are over here. And if Viper gets this to a safe spot, it's a really good thing for him. He can snipe the Trebs from behind. And Hera can't quite range it with the longboats. Also important to note that Hera does not have the... Um, uh, I, don't know, I call it Bob's Vinegar. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> the, the Viking unique tech for plus one damage on the longboats. I don't think he needs it. But I know some of you are going to wonder... He's running out of steam, folks. 128 pop. Buying stone for 239 gold. For what? We don't know. Maybe he can just farm all the way around on this uh, amphibious terrain. Maybe that's the solution. Viper now buying stone for 241 gold. He must be like, God damn, this is expensive. And War Galley is coming in for Viper, but I was about to say Longboats might kill that dock before it does, but Hera shifts over to this side, trying to save his Treb. Trying desperately to save his Treb. He's now going for another Blacksmith because, of course, all of his buildings are gone. And Viper continues to add towers here. As Hera now goes for a castle, Viper might be able to see this. Yeah, he can 100% see this. Lightcap could come over here. Bombard Cannon almost denies Stone from yet another castle. As the Skirmishers, the Hand Cannons, the Halberdiers come over. And this castle's not going up. It's simply not. Like, the Fighting Spirit from Hera is there. Right? He's going to send more Longboats over to try and support. And with those Longboats to help, maybe if he sends more Villagers, Castle goes up. Does it stay up? No. Why do I even say these things? It actually might stay up if it goes up. If he, gets, if he completes this, the Cavalier could run in for the Bomber Cannon, and it could actually live. 
Why do I even say these things? I don't even know. Like that that this bomber can is dead. This castle is gonna go up and it's gonna live. I shouldn't say anything. I should just sit here in silence. I appreciate the game. Galleon is in further complicating things for Hera because he needs more longboats to defend against the Galleon. But he's got five on wood. And the wood price is now up to 122 gold. And Viper is just doing Viper things, casually sitting with 700 gold in the bank. Quite impressive for a man with no gold. And now Hera's buying food for 241 gold. Oh no, we're running out. <laughs> There's only 7k left. There's only 7k. Viper has five relics. Hera is now farming around the center area. He refuses to give up. 117 population gets 161. He's got to know, man. Hera knows it's over. Like, if, if you're looking at it from his perspective, I mean, it's just... Yeah, the food prices are just too high. You can't keep buying. If Viper's out of gold now, all he needs to do is sell 500 food, and he's got enough gold to keep him going for a while. And that won't significantly lower the prices for it to be better for you. But he's going to make Viper kill him. Viper now has a hell of a navy. He's got 182 pop. He's feeling comfortable. And this was just a great game. GG well played coming in from Hera. And that's going to be a win for Viper. 8-8. Eight to eight, Potential of 5 more games. Oh my god, it's getting late. <laughs> it's getting late. I might have to I might have to continue this tomorrow. But I don't know how. I think there's another best of twenty one tomorrow. And then I'm gonna spoil the results during that. Oh no. Oh god. We'll have to, whatever. We'll just carry on, I suppose. Yeah, great great game there. Look at the eco. Gold. Forty five K collected disgusting look at the food though and the wood <laughs> i love games like this i've probably witnessed um be it golden pit or golden hill or golden swamp or any of the any of the gold ones you know i've probably witnessed four or five games like this in my casting career where one player is fully on the middle and is keeping the other player in it by buying resources. And the other player is keeping the player in the middle in it by selling resources. And it's always a pleasure. It's a nice little uh, symbiotic relationship that they've formed. While simultaneously fighting against each other. Okay, so um, we are going to have the loss for the Vikings. That's the second Civ pick for Hera, by the way. And a win for the Koreans. And then we look on the map draft, and it is a win on Golden Swamp for Viper. And we're just going to get into the next game as fast as possible. We're going to try and speed this up. You don't want to be here all day. I don't want to be here all day. But we definitely want to watch the games. And game 17 is coming right up. Game 17. What map is this going to be on? We're running out of maps. We're running out of sieves. You know, people ask me, whose draft do you think is better? And I say, ask ask me tomorrow if it's on the first day, right? And then they ask me at the beginning of the, the thing, whose draft do you think is better? I say, ask me, ask me in five games. I don't know. We'll have to maybe examine it after this one. But we've got uh, graveyards, and we have Romans here from Viper. Magyars from Hera. Magyars are definitely the more meta pick, but we saw what Tato did with the Romans. And it was kind of disgusting, right? Like, the, the double infantry bonus was, was kind of sick. And I think uh, Yo won Graveyard. No, Yo won Arabia with Romans without even going infantry. I think the eco bonus for this Civ is just kind of sick. 5% on everything, including building. It's just sick. It's good. It's disgusting. And the barracks is coming up early from Viper, so he's going to go into Militia. And then into uh, and at arms, and of course, when he gets the armor upgrade, uh, it will apply twice. 
They don't get the final armor upgrade, but in Feudal Age, they'll have plus two. In Castle Age, they'll have plus four. And Viper is just about to head out here with the Men-at-Arms, so we will pause it, or go back to normal speed, rather, as Hera goes for a range with Magyarus. So he knows the infantry is coming. And at this stage, it's if you're fighting up against these uh, Men-at-Arms with the double armor with archers, it's kind of like fighting up... I guess you don't fight against Malian Men-at-Arms with armor very often. Usually fighting them with just the plus one pierce armor. So I guess there's nothing real, really relatable in Feudal Age that is anything like this as long as Viper gets that armor relatively quickly and it is the Blacksmith. So this is a revised build that Tato went for as well. Instead of going Men-at-Arms into Archer range, they go Men-at-Arms into Blacksmith and they'll add the Archer range or the Stable later. But they have to make sure they have enough food to go for the armor there. And these, not only men-at-arms, but the spearmen as well, are going to be pretty tanky. Here they come. Archers are here from Hera. Really has to respect this army, though. They can get through walls fast. Villagers can't really fight against them. Archers without fletching are doing basically nothing. And even archers with fletching aren't doing all that much damage, right? Like three three pierce armor? Looking at an archer with fletching, five attack, you're doing two two damage. Ugh. Those archers are coming forward, and Viper's gonna know that they're coming forward because they attacked his uh his scout. And more men at arms are being added. Harris scout is fairly weak. And that's good for Viper. Means he can just kind of send the men at arms after the archers, and Hera's gonna have to run away with them. It's a nice little delay defense until you get your own range or stable up instead, and Viper will be going for the stable. Now, I haven't mentioned the differences between like this map and Arabia. It's kind it kind of feels like a land kind of Arabia vibe. The wood lines are obviously smaller. There's more gold patches, but they're smaller too. Just three tiles. And there's eleven relics. And uh, there's also a bunch of stone piles, but three tiles, once again. Look at this. Oh my god. Dude, they just do nothing. Like, Vipers probably have, are perfectly fine with losing that, that unit. Because it just bought him another 20 seconds, 30 seconds to get his scouts on the field. He still has these guys back here. Like, as soon as Hera overchops, if Viper notices it, oh, he could kill Vils. 100%. And right now, Hera with the Magyars is not really pay playing into any of his Civ strengths going Archers, right? Magyars are known for getting Forging automatically when reaching Feudal Age. They have cheaper Scouts as well. They do now... I think they have faster producing cav archers, right? I think that was a bonus from the ranges. So maybe Hera wants to play into cav archers. I haven't played them since that bonus came into effect. It's still rel relatively new, I believe. Um, now I'm going to have to double check that. I'm never quite sure if a bonus is actually something or if it's just something I read on Reddit. <laughs> I think I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's a thing. <laughs> uh, so maybe Hera wants to play into that but in the Feudal Age Magyars don't have an eco bonus so playing into Archers isn't really suiting your Civ strengths and you can see how much Micro is needed just to take out these men at arms and that Archer is going to die against the Scouts armor coming in for the Scouts from Viper as well another Archer goes down Hera is looking like he wants to go up to uh, Castle Age soon and he's going for a stable of his own. And now he's not looking like he wants to go up to Castle Age because he's adding in the scouts. Guess he went for the archers just to weather the storm at the beginning. Now the scouts are on the way. However, Viper has an advantage in terms of uh, armor. And now bloodlines coming in and number of scouts as well. <clears throat> we'll see what he can do. He's still keeping his men-at-arms back. 
They're probably not going to win the fight against the archers, right? Hera will mark micro away, but what Viper can do is just kind of patrol them in the general direction, and it's going to buy him a ton of time because the archers will need to run back and hit and run. They can't stand still or push forward. The men-at-arms will eat them alive. Second stable from Hera. And Viper's going to see that coming up. And with the addition of the scouts here, it's unlikely that Hera is already on the way to Castle Age. But he is. He is. Wow. Wow, dude. Great eco balance here from Hera. I was about to say, like, Viper will just assume that Hera is going double stable scout production in Feudal Age here. And he technically is. But it's only until he gets to Castle Age. Nice job here from Hera. Really, really nice job. We're looking at the food eco from Viper. I mean, he's not taking from four farms at the front here. And now he's pulling farmers to build towers. So his castle age is going to be severely delayed. Also has towers over here. Very, very nervous, I suppose, about Hera coming in. I don't know why he's hard committing so much onto these towers. I, I don't understand. Feels like walls would have accomplished the same thing, right? Maybe not. Still hasn't clicked up. 16 on food. Hera's almost in Castle Age. Hera's got a bigger army. This might be like... This might be a really rough position for Viper. He goes for another tower. He has 700 gold in the bag. Crossbow Bodkin on the way for Hera. It was really good pressure early from Viper. He made the switch into scouts. He didn't take a lot of eco damage at home. He's just never able to uh, get enough villagers on food. Maybe because he had so many on stone for all of these random towers. Maybe that was the reason he's so far behind. Scouts are now looping around. 47 villagers for Viper versus 40 from Hera. But of course, Hera spent time going up to Castle Age. And Hera also got Wheelbarrow. So I would definitely favor Hera's position. This Viper now loops around here with the scouts. And he's trying to stall his way up to the Castle Age. There we go. Hera's going to try and come over here and do damage. But I mean... Tower City, right? Hundred percent Tower City over here. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Harris is gonna be like, uh, what? <laughs> Arrows coming from everywhere, and he needs to retreat. Still a lot of idle time there for Viper. Viper did try and do damage with the scouts. He came in here. It looks like he lost one. And he's going to be running away. Eco KD is still 0 0. Still no second TC for Hera. Monastery coming up here for him. He wants to be able to grab these relics. Remember, I said there's 11 relics on the field. And keeping these light cab and these scouts alive is going to be really useful for sniping those monks eventually. So both players need to make sure that they try and save those units. I mean, I guess the towers are keeping him away. There's five of them, right? I suppose they are doing something. But Hera is still doing damage regardless. And Viper is just kind of stuck. Calls the GG, and we have to wonder, where did it go wrong there for Viper? Hera just found himself with so much res. I don't even think Viper was in a terrible position there. Like, he wasn't being harassed at all. It just He just didn't have enough food. Too much stone. Went for Omega Towers. and Love to know his reasoning behind that. KD better for Hera. Eco better for Hera as well. And... We will go on to the next game. That was a short one. We're going to mark that down as a win for Magyars. A loss for the Romans.
and we mark down graveyards as a loss for Viper as well. So nine to eight in favor of Hera. Go back to our replays. And get into game number 18. We are approaching the end. We are approaching the end, my friends. Potentially three games left. Potentially. Maybe two. Who knows? Hera only needs two wins. Viper only needs three. We're going to speed up through the first part of this uh, Serengeti game. Now, in Serengeti, you only get one elephant. Lots of zebra and ostrich as well you can push in. The wood lines here for Viper are actually kind of amazing at the front. But they are also exposed, and he doesn't have that much at the back. He's playing his Tatars here. Which means he gets a little bit of extra food on his sheep, which is good. This map's basically all about gathering as much food as possible early. On the other side, we have Hera. Oh no, it's back. The phallic rock. It has returned. We thought we got rid of it. We won't pay attention to it. We won't look at it. Hera playing as Ethiopians. Barracks is coming up for Viper. Will he be going for the men-at-arms approach, or is that just an early barracks? It looks like it's just an early barracks. Still a hole into his base here, too. Can't trust these trees. And Viper will be going for an archer range on this side as we get to Feudal Age and we resume standard time. We have a archer range here from Hera as well. So I would suspect... That this is going to be a pretty stalemate feudal age. Just the way that Viper's setting up his base tells me he wants the wall over here. And then wall here and like wall to the edge of the map. If he walls to the edge of the map here, at least he'll have a wood line under his control. Each one of these trees as well has 150 wood. So it's a little bit more than your standard wood line. You can think of this as a standard wood line and then you they give it 50% more. Blacksmith coming up for Hera. Still just one archer range. And that's it. Not even adding spearmen, either of these guys. And they're just kind of sitting back. Just like me. Ugh. What do I do when it's, um, there's no live audience to keep me entertained? On a slow pace game like this. I don't even know. My beer has gotten obscenely warm by the way. I cracked one. Um, before I started on this whole crusade. And uh, it's gotten very warm. Because <laughs> I've forgotten to drink. <laughs> oh boy. Viper and Hera. Come on guys. Come on boys. We're not going to have any aggression here? I guess not. Viper's just going to be walling here. There's still a hole in the front that we need to take care of. It's a very strange wall over here. What does he see? He sees everything. And he, what is this? <laughs> what on earth is this? <laughs> nice wall, Viper. Great stuff there, buddy. It's still open here, 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 here. <laughs> Oh, here. <laughs> very, very strange. He advances forward, though. Hera's going to go for the full walls as well. And Viper even getting the armor. Hera's not even gotten fletching, so Hera's just trying to, uh, to go castle age. I, in an ideal world for Hera here, I think he wants to click castle age without fletching. Researched. I'm not sure he can get away with it though, because Viper is now harassing his wood line and Viper can push in this way. We'll see. Knowing Hera, he might try and get away with it anyway. He's gonna go for the market. Viper's going for Town Watch right now, and Hera might just sell the stone, buy his way up, and then get Fletching. And Viper doesn't have a way in yet. Stone has been sold. Only 100 food away. 
villagers. Seems like they dropped off some hunt from uh, Zebra or whatever over here. And uh, Hera's got enough to go up. And Hera's on the way up to Castle Age. Viper's still sitting there with 200 wood in the bank. He goes for a market of his own. When he sees those prices, he's going to know that Hera's sold. But he probably already knows that Hera's up right now. He doesn't see fletching on the archers, right? He knows the archers are back here. He sees the full walls. Like, he knows. Nice. Viper even pulling away this stuff before Hera can get some shots in. That's that's cute. Love to see it. And now Viper's going to sell his stone, too. He's going to try and go up. Kind of feels like he needs to win this one, right? Like, you want to tie it up at 9-9 again. You don't want Hera to go to match point, that's for sure. And then you have to win three games to come back. Definitely not the situation you want to be in. Viper is now up to the castle age. Minute and 40 seconds behind Hera. And he will go for another archer range. And will it be cav archers here? That is the question that I have. I don't know if, if cab archers are particularly good in this situation. It feels like crossbow for him might actually be better. I know it's up against Ethiopian crossbow, but you do get thumb ring automatically with Tatars. And you are getting more damage on these hills. As Hera now sneaks out. He's going to try and come in. And Viper... I mean, Viper's had enough with these woodlands, right? He, d he tried... He tried once to wall it, and <laughs> he's like, I'm just going to wall behind. It's fine. Whatever. Still only has, ac like, access to this one wood line, though. There's another one here, but it's not really secure at the moment, and this is the only wood that he's bringing in. Could be ranged by Harris crossbows. It's kind of it's a little bit threatening to have your only wood option right here. My favorite corner, by the way, I just discovered this. Anyone who watches me knows. Favorite corner is a thing. I don't even need to look at the other three. This one's my favorite. It's beautiful. Relic, rock, lion, stone. Sure, there's a lesson there, but I don't know what it is. But just in case, we'll look at that. That's a good corner, too. That corner sucks. Elite Skirm, Crossbow, Bodkin Arrow. All coming in for Viper. Now Hera has a Siege Workshop at home. It's very interesting. At home? Why would he... Um, why would he make it at home? It feels like you need it forward, right? I guess he thought there was more production. It's going to be a bit more of a threat here from Viper coming forward. Just hasn't materialized. Viper's played pretty safe with his military. But he does have military back here, and Hera didn't notice it. And I didn't notice it either. And if I'm not going to notice it, how is Hera ever going to notice it? He loses two villagers at the back. And this explains why the Mangonels were at home. Because Viper kept some of his army forward. Hera knew it. Army at the back here, clearing up the crossroads from Hera. Villagers going down at the wood line. Ballistics on the way in for Viper. And Manganel's struggling to catch up with the skirmishers. And Hera is at 40 villagers right now. 12 army versus 41 villagers. 14 army from Viper. Viper kind of wants to delay probably until he gets ballistics. He just wants to, you know, chill with this battle. Once he gets ballistics, then he's going to have the thumb ring and ballistic advantage. And he'll probably start trying to engage as soon as this comes in. Here's the research coming, and he makes a beeline directly for the archers from Hera. And Hera's going to know with that engagement right now that Viper has ballistics, and the dance begins. <laughs> I love this, dude. Look at these two. <laughs> Look at these two. It's absolutely beautiful. Viper now goes after the villagers, which are remarkably less... Uh, easy to micro against ballistics and Hera will just retreat back to this stone over here he's going to place a TC 
He actually bought 200 stones, so he's probably planning on making another one. Viper will make a TC over here on another wood line, so more wood access for now, which is always good. And Hera is now pushing forward. He's pushing forward with the three mangonels. Not many crossbows to back this up, but those three mangonels are very, very dangerous for Viper. And Viper will need to probably add in a stable when he sees that, right? Make some step lancers. You can make some knights. Oh my god, how did he get in? Is a question. How did he get in? Dead villagers all over the place from Hera. We're going to go back in time here. A little bit further back. A little bit further back. Aha! There's always a hole in the wood lines, folks. This is a hole that Viper made. And Hera didn't realize it was being made. Viper walks, walks right in here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh my god. These crossbows have killed 11 villagers total. He killed eight on that entry into Hera's base. And now the mangonels are coming forward and Viper has... <laughs> Viper has a mini heart attack. <laughs> he just ran under the rocks from three mangonels. He knows how many villagers he killed, though. And he's still killing more. As two more villagers go down on that side. And uh, he must know that he's ahead in eco. Even though Hera just wiped up some of the crossbows back here, Viper must know that he's at least 10 villagers ahead if not more and he is indeed more villagers than that ahead more crossbows coming in kills another vill that he knew was weak on the gold and he loops around this way again with the crossbows and the scorpions have to come deal with that mangonels are still pushing in here Hera has to be careful he doesn't nuke his own units but it looks like he's attack rounding in the middle of these two houses to try and get maximum damage on those. Viper now coming out with a mangonel of his own. And he's going to get one mangonel from Hera. Does he get a second one while Hera's busy? Does he get a second one? He does get a second one. Oh, that's tragedy for Hera. Absolutely tragic for Hera. He must have been paying attention somewhere else. Maybe at the front here. Maybe he was in the market or something. Thought his mangonels were safe. Turns out they weren't and gets one back. But still, one mangonel with just 11 crossbows is not as threatening as three mangonels. Viper had to be concerned for his life against that first army. Against this one? Meh. Once again, Viper, is this worth your time? <laughs> I wonder if you just shift click this guy in, into a ton of different places. Yeah. Harris starts firing on this one. Well, Viper starts moving. And then Harris starts firing on this one. Viper starts moving. <laughs> and the crossbows win again. As during that time, Harris was still trying to push in here and Viper was still trying to defend. Right now, Harris has seven on food. He's got 16 crossbows versus the 13 from Viper. 50 total villagers. And ballistics on the way. He's also got stone on the way. So it might be a situation where Hera's just really going to try and force the issue. Go for that forward castle potentially. And see if he can make something happen. On this side, Viper is making a TC and Hera has no vision on that at all. And now... With the knowledge that there's crossbows in the center like this, I think Hera just can't even attempt that forward castle, right? Castle is going to have to go somewhere else. Looks like there was a big shot here from Hera on the crossbows from Viper. Viper got a shot on the crossbows as well with his mangonel. This mangonel has zero kills though, so maybe the mangonels took each other out. That's probably what happened. The end of the day, Viper is 3 TC booming. Hera is 2 TC booming. Hera has taken significant damage. And now Hera is forced into some risky decisions. AKA a castle at the front of Viper's base. He's chasing away this army. He knew this army was here and he, he allocated some crossbows to chase it away. 
so that the villagers could come across in peace. But there's still a Mangonel here from him. Viper, what do we... What are we doing here? I don't understand that at all. Still a Mangonel here from Viper. Oh, boy. And Hera's just going to make a TC here. What on earth? Is this TC just to, like, defend his villagers so he has somewhere to fall back to? Or does he really want to boom in this area? Is he just particularly attached to that wood line? Probably just somewhere to fall back to. Just in case, you know? While he waits for his reinforcements. And here comes the castle. He's going to put it here this time. Oh, jeez. Is it going even further forward? Yup. And Viper is looping over this way with the Mangonel. He sees the villagers coming in. He sees the villagers coming in. He sees the villagers coming in. No Mangonels in position, though, to stop this castle. And Viper will simply abandon this position. It's a lot of farms that Hera is taking. It's a stone over here that Hera is taking as well. But uh, Viper has already expanded this way, right? And he's already got Mangonels to defend himself. Showtails might be an issue if Hera can afford to produce them, which is unlikely at this stage with 15 on food. This Viper manages to snipe that and get out of dodge before the castle is complete. Um, but yeah, I mean, Viper still has a ton of map control. He's got the better economy. He's raiding with knights here. Hera is going to take out one TC. And some farming eco. And that's about it with that castle. Maybe the second castle can be more threatening, right? Maybe the second castle can come up here somewhere, take out the gold or something like that. Maybe come over here somewhere. But it seems like Viper's going to have enough military to defend with all these scorpions, the crossbows, the mangonels. This is a kind of concerning position, though. Look at how ugly it is around that gold, right? Villagers are going down here. Hera's got some good micro with the mangonels so far. But now Viper's on the hill with Tataris. And Viper gets a nice shot there with both mangonels. One on the crossbow, one on the double scorpions. And he finds the mangonel kill from Hera too. And he chases these away. Ballistics for these crossbows coming in clutch. Sniping the crossbows as they retreat there from Hera. Hera doesn't move far enough, and he tanks another Mangonel shot. And now we look at Viper's Eco. 96 villagers, has enough stone for a castle. 1,200 gold in the bank. Has not taken significant damage from this castle drop. And Hera is forced to go for his second castle at home. However, Hera does have 82 villagers suddenly. Like, he's not been idle at home. He's been adding economy this entire time. 22 on food is better than Viper currently. Only 14 on food. He still has yet to replace the farms over here. But he's buying food and he's thinking, what if? What if I can go up to Castle or Imperial Age? If he really wants to go up to Amp, he should probably cancel this. Is that necessary? I don't know. Knights are over here from Viper. Those will be dealt with by the crossbows. It is a 12 villager lead currently for Viper. Thought it would be more. It is 14 now. And the eco upgrades are actually even. Which is wild. When when you look at the villager disparity right now and you look at the eco KD, like Viper should be ahead by more. But I guess taking out that TC. Denies one production building from Viper. Also, denying the food means a lot of idle TC time kind of creeping in here from the snake as well. God, I swear, Viper's the only player that does this. He'll be like, I want a castle here, but I don't want 15 villagers building it. <laughs> I'm just going to make this with one or two. It's fine. <laughs> like, that's his first castle. It's not like his seventh castle in late imperial age that's his first castle and there was just military here and it's the main gold that you're taking right now you should be building with more so that this doesn't happen but he only loses one and he's on the way up to imperial age 
Viper comes forward with another army. Still has the knight over here. Not doing too much. Hera. Still taking stone over here. And he almost has enough stone for another castle. What do I see? Oh, I was looking at Viper stone. Hera definitely has enough stone for another castle. And he just sold 500 stone as well. Holy, he had so much stone. Oh my god. Probably should have put one right here. Well, he can. Cav archers are being added in for Viper. Keshik's on the way as well. Hera trying to take care of this forward army. But Viper's paying attention. Viper's done a pretty good job this game. Actually, both of them. Microing small groups of military all over the map. And Hera's now on the way up to him. Wow. Nice job, man. Really, really nice job from him. Castle in the center on this gold. Also on the hill near this uh, forward TC. The kind of random forward TC. As Viper now goes for a castle over here. When we look at these two sieves late game. Hmm. I think on a more open map like this, I would probably favor Tatars over Ethiopians. And that's not good. I mean, Viper just lost a number of villagers there. Hera takes the villager lead. Unlikely situation here, given the early damage that Viper did. Hera's done a fantastic job recovering. Double trebs from Viper should be able to push this back. And Kashuks are going to be very annoying. They only have the first armor, but they do have bloodlines. And the Cav Archers are over here. And we were speaking about a villager lead. Well, not anymore. Viper clears up so much on that wood line. How many kills did they just get? 12 villager kills over on this wood line. Keshik's still running in. Crossbow's still running in. Skirmisher's idling the farms. Castle's going to go down shortly. Viper just kind of clinging onto the edge of the map as he often does. Also collecting the relics as he often does. Bye bye castle. How much stone does Hera have? He's got a lot. He has a lot of stone. And Viper will push forward again. Like I said, in an open map style like this, Hera's gonna keep hitting that go back to work hotkey. They're, the villagers are gonna keep coming back to the wood lines like this. They're gonna keep getting killed. Viper will keep expanding along the edge. Keshix will be hitting him from everywhere. It's hard to keep yourself focused if you're in Hera's position. And you've got an economy that's so spread out like this. And Viper can just kind of... Well, all of his eco is basically connecting. So he can just kind of push out one step at a time as he often does. Take the TC out. Take the castle out. Distract Hera on the sides with raids like this. As Hera now is forced to go for a castle over here. Dude, it's like it's a, it's a disease. He's just consistent. Every castle must be built with one or two villagers. That's it. Anything else would be wildly inefficient. Arbalist on the way for Hera. 135 villagers for Viper, 118 for Hera. You can see the Eco K8 really uh, starting to pick up here as Viper has killed 53 villagers from Hera. Takes out another one. He's going to take out another one. He's going to deny a TC over here. And if you're in Hera's position, what you want to do is probably, if you already have Arbalist, you probably want to focus the fight in one area, right? You don't want to be constantly responding to this stuff, which is probably why he went for a tower or a castle over here. To just lock it down. Get rid of that headache. But I don't think Viper is going to just engage you in one area, honestly. I think he's going to keep picking away. And Viper's even going for Selk Armor, which makes these fights against the Cav Archers even more difficult. 
Also going for that final armor upgrade. Hera sees it and it's GG and Vipers won another game. Oh my god, dude. 9-9 nine, nine in a best of 21. Oh, potentially three games left over. Holy. Eco much better for Viper. KD much better for Viper. And we're just we're just moving. We're just schmoving on to the next game. 100%. Loss for the Ethiopians. Win for the Tatars. And uh, it's 9-9, nine, nine, folks. It is 9-9. Nine to nine. Okay. Damn, dude. Game 19. Oh, snap. Game 19. We go into this one, and it's going to be on Crater. I forgot that this map even existed. We're going to speed it up again for my sanity. On Crater, you get uh, some boars. You also get some golden stones, which are usually in front of your base, which means an all-in push through the center works a lot of the time. There's five relics in the center that players will try and snag. Um... And also, the wood line is up on these little hills, and it's surrounded by this rocky terrain that you cannot wall. So, there's a couple points of interest in each person's base, right? Obviously, the stones and the golds in the front, if you cut them off, it's great. But usually, what players are aiming to hit is either the berries or the wood line at the back. Now, Hera is playing as Franks, Viper is playing as Teutons, so they were both likely open scouts here. And we're going to go back to normal speed once we get to, uh, once we get to Feudal Age. We see the barracks coming up from both. Both players spent the first parts of the game pushing in deer as well, so I don't think they're going to have any exploration on their opponent. They will not go back to normal time. And they're just going to start heading out. They know that the opponent is in this general direction, though, so it's not the worst thing in the world to not have discovered them so far. Spearman coming forward with the scout as well. And Hera runs right into the TC from Viper. That's damage that he definitely doesn't want to take, right? Now, the Teutons do... Uh, sorry, the Franks do get extra HP. But they don't get access to Bloodlines. So if we're going for a full feudal engagement, which we very well could in a map like this, um, the Teuton scouts will be more powerful. At the end of Feudal Age. However, Franks have other bonuses, right? They get faster foraging on the berries, and there's berry bushes here. They don't have to get horse color. They get that for free, which is very nice. And then their castles are cheaper, which could be super useful later on in the game. However, if Viper ever gets a good setup here with Teutons, and he gets the military advantage with his scouts, maybe Hera takes a bad fight, he can come forward for the Teuton Tower Rush. Which is pretty intimidating. You can garrison up to 10 villagers in the towers. And you get the uh, corresponding amount of arrows. So very, very strong. Very, very uh, risky to play against. And uh, Hera's going to have to watch out for that. Also, Viper's farms are cheaper as well with Teutons. And that's why he's putting down so many of them. You can see Hera only four farms right now. Viper already on nine. And he already has Horse Collar, too. So he's looking pretty good. However, Hera does have the advantage when we're talking about scout numbers. Defender's advantage is in Viper's favor, though. And his reinforcements are going to be at the battlefield sooner than Hera's, which have to go all the way across the map. Which means the Viper should be able to defend until his farming really starts to kick in, his farming advantage. 15 on food currently for Viper. 11 on food for Hera. He adds more farms. 12 farms now. When does that second stable come up? I don't think you go for an archer range, right? Maybe you do? I don't know. It just seems like a lot of scouts and a lot of spears. It feels like you want a second stable or a black blacksmith. Yeah, blacksmith makes a lot of sense. Get those upgrades in. Hair will go for a blacksmith as well. Yeah. 
And this is kind of nerve-wracking, I think. 9-9. Nine, nine. The army is knocking at Viper's door. There's a lot of spears there from Viper, though. And if you're Hera, you're looking at that spear count, and you're thinking, if I look away from this fight for one second, my scouts kind of wander in there the same way that Viper's scout wandered in here. I'm dead. <laughs> like, there's not much... You're not coming back from all of your scouts dying here forward to Spearman. You're simply not. As Viper now fails the quick wall over there, he's forced to delete his house, but he won't end up uh, losing any villagers in that fight. And he's engaging now with his villagers against the Spearman from Hera. Both players having forging now. And these Spearmen are pretty tough, and Viper's going to lose Vils. Like, that's three Vils dead to Spearmen. Not ideal at all. Viper's trying to trap these scouts in the center. He's now splitting his spearmen to try and get them. And he's gone for the gate. He's gone for the trap. Oh, snap, dude. What a trap there from Viper. It was like it was in slow motion. We saw the gates come down. We saw the villagers slowly waddling over there. Didn't think it was going to happen, and it did. And three scouts just went down there. But... Remember, Harry killed those three villagers before. And Hera is now faster to the armor the same way he was faster to forging. So it seems like he's just one step ahead with everything in this game. How many farms? 15 farms here for Viper. 21 farms for Hera. Yep. Just one step ahead. And Viper is adding the second stable. Does Hera already have the second stable? Ha ha! He doesn't! But it's fine. He'll just stall this one out. And it'll, be all, it'll all be okay. Bloodline's coming in for Viper now. 11 spearmen. Should have gone for a second barracks. Am I right? More spearmen. Seems to be... Seems to be the consensus between the two of them. Spearmen, good. NBL would do really well here. Bloodlines is in from Viper. So his scouts are officially better than Hera's. And it looks like right now, Hera is trying to go up to Castle Age. Hera could get caught out. You really need to keep your military production up. That's the reason he's been pressuring at Viper's base this entire game. Because he's had like one or two more units at all times. Maybe a half a second faster than the upgrades, right? But now he's stalling. He's trying to get the resources in for Castle Age. And it's Viper's turn to be the aggressor. 20 military against 13. Double stable available to him. Scouts are trying to come in. Hera has kept it fully walled here. Really nice job from Hera. Got to make sure you're constantly looking back at your wood line. Can't have any exposed areas of your eco. And Hera is on the way to Castle Age. So I think he's done it. He's delayed long enough. Market is being built from Viper. Hera is thinking about coming out with these scouts. Looking for some more vills. Looking for a good time. And Viper sells his stone and buys food. So he's trying to click up too. But once again, Hera's one step ahead. Did he delete that mill? Hang on a second. Go back in time, Marty. Right. I won't give you the satisfaction of killing my mill. You shalt not kill my mill. Why would he delete that? I'm, I don't understand, dude. I don't get it. <laughs> Why on earth would he delete that? So weird. Castle H is on the way for Viper. 50 seconds behind Hera. And it looks like Hera sniped another villager somewhere along the line here. Eco Kitty is 4 to 0. Let's see if we can just get the spearman. Hera has more HP on his spearman in total. He's got more spearmen in there. Like Viper's going to need to run, right? Scouts are being chased away by these spears over here. It's 16 spearmen for Viper. He's going for another barracks. 
And it's double monastery from Hera. What? I guess to grab the relics early? That seems to be the only explanation, right? Monks aren't particularly good against spearmen or pikemen. Um, it's not a high value unit, so converting it doesn't get you that much. And also, he's up against Teutons. So Viper is going to have conversion resistance on everything. But I suppose if Hera just built the monasteries to get monk numbers to get these relics really quick, it could work out. And you can, you can see that Viper is clearly prioritizing um, these relics as well, right? Forward monastery. Once it is close as possible. So he can just come out here, snag a relic, come out here, snag a relic. Begun the Pike Menorahs have. And he'll see the double monk. Doesn't see the double monastery, but... He knows there's at least one. And now he's going to be like, uh, what? <laughs> double? Didn't expect that. Hera also added a second town center behind that. Uh, this push, too. So once again, a little bit in front of Viper. Viper now trying to snipe the monk. He does get the monk. Zero monks here from Hera. 17 pikemen for Viper, 15 for Hera. I don't know where all of the pikemen are, though. There's only... Oh, I guess there's 14 there. It didn't look like 14. I guess some of them were at home in defense. His Viper snags one relic. Think about snagging more. This monk is coming out here, though. Gotta be careful. Trying to take your relic. You got it. Viper's now on stone. If he gets a castle up here, that could be terrible for the Franks. That could be absolutely terrible. Not only for the castle position, which which would be awful, but I think this is a situation where Teutonic Knights are unironically good, which is extremely rare to find. <laughs> I think this is a situation with the numbers of pikemen where Teutonic Knights are actually okay. However, I think Hera's going to be the one with the castle up first, right? Castles are cheaper for Franks. Almost has enough for it. Could plop one down right here. Could put one down to protect himself over here or something. Maybe over here as well. So we see these knights from Viper trying to get in. Hera's going to wall that off. Nice job from Hera there. And the knights will come in this way, but Hera's ready. So ready. Viper still only has one relic. And Hera's got so many monks. That converted light cab, though, going to town. That converted light cab is going to town. It's already killed three monks, and he will kill again. No, he won't kill again. Viper gets the plus one uh, melee armor from being Teutons, and apparently that makes all the difference. Because they both had... Actually, Hera had plus two attack. So I guess Viper just had more units that entire time as the uh, the pike battles begin in earnest once again on this side as Viper tries to snipe the monks here with knights. Conversion resistance really coming in clutch here for all of Viper's units, and Viper has managed to snipe three relics behind this. Also has enough stone for a castle, and I think he's coming now. Oh, Lord, is he ever coming. Hera has enough for two castles, though. Two castles. One right here, one right here. One of them's going to go up. 
We'll see if Viper can do anything. Hera's coming up for a castle. Viper's coming for a castle. Hera just plops that one down right on top. He's building it with so many, and Viper will simply delete this. And Hera can even finish this castle, but he's going to go hunting. He's going to go chasing. He's looking for where Viper's placed in this next one. Tons of pikemen. Another knight coming in. Monks to back it up, and Viper's looking for another spot, and he finds one right here. Hera will place a castle over here. However, Viper is blocking the foundation. Hera could put another one right here. If he wanted to, he's got enough stone with the Franks. As Viper continues to fight here with Pikeman. And fight he does. Twas an epic battle. The battle of the castles. But in the end, the Frank castle was up in defense. And Hera still had enough stone for another one. I think Hera should go here with his next castle, honestly. Send the boys. Send the girls. Send the barn. S send everything. Not there. Here. Here. Do it here. Here's fine, too, though. Now petards are coming in from Viper, so he's going to build up petards and probably push out towards that. I don't know what he's going to do against this, though, because he certainly doesn't have enough stone to make another castle of his own. As Hera now goes into throwing Axemen, it's like, surely these will be good against the Pikemen. Forever forgetting the possibility of Teutonic Knight exists. These are, like, some of the coolest units in the game. So one of the funnest units to use in the game, too. If you get a big mass of them, oh, baby. There's nothing like ripping through TCs. Hell, even castles with Axemen. And Hera's just going to take back all the relics. I think Viper's toast. Absolutely toast Malone here. Just one TC pressure from him. He's got units like in rams. He's got like petards here. But there's no defense at home. And Hera's going to pop up with the villagers. He'll be able to take out the pikemen as soon as they ungarrison with the TC. And then you can go after the rams. And there we go. Relics are all exposed. Hera almost has enough to buy, um, or he does have enough to buy stone for another castle if he wants to go for one. As he's forced to go for a monastery over here, Viper ejects with all of the petards. And he's going to be able to take out this castle. So Hera does not have a castle in defense. And now Viper is buying more stone. And Viper is going for another forward castle here. Oh, baby. Viper is not messing around, but neither is Hera. Still pressuring on this side. Going for a forward TC. That's his fourth TC of the game. He's at 78 villagers against 55. More than 20 villagers ahead of Hera right now. This castle might change things, though. I mean, Hera's kind of committing on these ramps. The castle will go up, right? The TC will go down. Oh, that's painful. Oh, wow. Viper losing his entire wood eco. Five villager kills already. They're going to get three more. We'll finish with eight. And the wood economy for Viper is tragic, right? It's just these villagers over here. As he's losing a TC now to, like... A knight and some pikemen. And now he's pushing up this way. Actually pushing up this way with a tower. Hera does notice that though. And he goes immediately for a castle. To defend himself. And Viper's like, yep. Checkmate, I suppose. And it's 10-9. For Hera. Really good eco there for Hera. I, it, like, honestly, it just felt like Hera was one step ahead the entire time. Until they got to the castle drops where Hera was kind of responding to him. Every single thing that Viper was doing was something that Hera had already done. And uh, it was really, really nice from him. Maybe that's just Franks against Teutons, right? Maybe they're just a faster Civ in general and Teutons need more time to build up. But uh, really good performance from him.
Viper also kind of showing a little bit of his YOLO side. And he, <laughs> he did take out the castle with Petards and Rams. He did take out the TC. Like, he did kind of defend himself at home. He did get some of the relics. Like, it, it, was, it was pretty good from him. But wasn't able to overcome. And we got that. We, we did get the beauty of that Pikeman ASMR in the center. The ding, 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 ding. 10 to 9 for Hera. Oh my god. Oh my god. Viper's playing really well. Like, Hera's in peak form right now. And Viper's, like, basically matching him the entire way. Really, really nice. I still don't know who's going to win this. Like, obviously you favor Hera. Oh, my 10. My 10 is... Oh, no. It's out of center. Oh, it's a good thing I noticed that now. Imagine I did the whole thing like that. <laughs> I'm not used to double digits. <laughs> All right. Potentially two more games. That's it. I've been recording now for three and a half hours. Oh, God. I thought maybe I would do half the games tonight, and then I just... It's kind of like... I'm just getting interested, right? I'm invested now. I want to see who wins. I went to extraordinary lengths to not be spoiled for the six hours in between this set finishing and me casting it for YouTube. Here we are, though. We're on runestones. We're going to speed this up just a little bit again. And we've got Incas for Viper. We've got Poles for Hera. Now, runestones is basically like just Arabia, except there's always a relic in the center. I think there's a few more wood lines as well in general. And it's a little bit more wallable, and you can see walling potential here for Viper. Right? With Incas. Easy. Gold is forward. That's kind of unfortunate, but he's got a gold back here. He's got a stone back here. Really good map from Viper. And we look at Hera's base. Also, great map. Great map from Hera. Right? Wallable here. 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 The stone is unfortunate for poles, but he can make do. He's got the gold at the back, and he's already starting to wall. We might just fast forward our way through Fuel Age here. I don't know. We'll see. I feel like it's going to be fairly passive. Yeah. Two Militia Drush is coming in here from Viper. Maybe go on two times speed until we uh, see what's going to develop from this. He's going up to the Feudal Age, and he's likely going to add an Archer Range behind this. His Hera now comes out to the stone. This used to be very common with poles to see this all the time, where they would use the stone as their uh, gold income. Because you used to be able to gather 50% gold for every stone that you brought in, but now it's down to like 20%. So the gold income is super slow. Fighting this off with villagers right now as Viper goes for the walls we predicted, and he has a range here. Full walls from Hera is on the stone so he's gonna have enough stone to tower himself if he goes for market he could sell the stone for gold he's getting a little bit of gold dribble from being on that doesn't have any military production <laughs> he's just playing tower defense that's it peak polish behavior pbp pbb ppb why is that so difficult hmm PPB. Hera's not even responding to this. Viper's like, I'm here. He wants to cause idle time. And Hera barely even paying attention. Blacksmith here. Tower already on the stone. If he really needs it, if he sees the archers coming forward, and you can see him with the scout. Like, he's looking for those archers coming forward, right? He missed this here um but he's been he's been searching for them and if he really really needs to with the polish healing combined with the stone he has in the bank he could just probably force down a tower to defend a wood line or defend the berries or something like that like he's got enough stone here to defend himself it's fine he doesn't even need scouts does have horse collar as well, so he's going to start farming around these full works. Plenty of space back here for full work activities. Actually forgot a deer, and this deer is being very clever. It's hiding behind a tree. Because we all know, oh dude, oh he's, oh, he's found a better spot. 
<laughs> we all know that Hera will mercilessly hunt this deer. It's a good strat. As Hera just forces down a tower over here. Full work on the way up from Hera. Now, there's a reason that more people don't do this strategy with poles. It is viable, right? You can go to stone, you get the gold, you have towers to defend yourself, but you don't have any map control. And your opponent can always find some weak point that your towers can't reach, right? Like an archer over here or something. Eventually, he's going to be able to range. Archer's over here, archer's over here. They can get to the market first because you're so busy mining stone and then investing your wood and stone into towers and your villager build time as well instead of gathering resources that they can usually go up to Castle Age before you, even though they're producing military. It's a strategy you can employ with this Civ, but uh, there's a reason we don't see it more often. It's not super efficient on the economic side. And Viper is coming forward with villagers. Like, where would he? Where would he put the tower? He on the stone. Wow. Okay. Viper is about to click up. He didn't sell his stone because he's busy putting the stone into a tower. On this side, as Hera now goes for a market of his own, he can sell his stone. Does he see this? No. Viper places it one tile further forward. Nice. Viper also over here. And it looks like Hera did... Wait. Wait. Did Hera lose a villager to a boar? There is a death here that I've just noticed. Where are we? Was it you? No. Is it you? Okay, it's, she's dead already. Oh my god. Okay, so we sent this guy out earlier. We're just doing a little backtrack. We're just doing a little backtrack. And this might be the way... This is, might be the reason why Hera's playing like this. Because he lost a vill earlier and he feels like he's behind. So that might be why he's made this decision. Oh, sloppy. Ooh, okay. But Dave, this is why you don't fast forward through Feudal Age. Great. That's fantastic. That's amazing. I just made up an opinion and a person that had that opinion. Harris forced to leave the stone. Viper does not wall in this tower. Now he does, which is nice realized his mistake and uh now harry is in a position where he needs to wait till castle age before he can really have anything to push back here viper is 35 villagers hera is 36 viper's resources are looking pretty good hera is really lacking wood has a lot of food but still doesn't even have a barracks like he has to build the barracks before he can even go for a stable to defend or an archer range or anything and Viper's got these villagers forward, so that's probably going to, you know, snowball into a siege workshop, maybe monasteries as well. It's going to be really, really ugly for Hera to push this back. Even if he goes for a stable or something, goes for some knights, he can't even get the counterattacks in because Viper's going to finish the walls over here. So he's going to be safe at home too. This is like an all-in push with no consequences economically or uh being open at home viper really really nice stuff he tries to go under the tc there Herrick kind of calls him out on it says you can't do that brother and Hera now gets the castle age and he's working away on a singular stable and a siege workshop but look at all the vision viper's getting sees the stable sees the siege workshop he knows what's going on he knows what's happening. Monk takes care of any knights coming out of here. Mangonel will cancel at the Siege Workshop from Hera. And the crossbows will take care of anything else. 
And there's not a whole lot of room for Hera to uh, to boom back here. <laughs> there's enough for a couple full works, but when we're talking about adding TCs and such, it's going to get a little bit claustrophobic. Especially with Viper knocking at the door. Pikeman is in from Viper. Double barracks pikeman production. He's got monks. He's got a mangano. He's got villagers forward to repair the mangano. I would love to see an outpost from the snake. I think an outpost would be very valuable right here. Right now he's kind of using the pikeman as an outpost. He sees the mangano from Hera now. And Hera is working away on the first armor upgrade. And Hera is going to be going into light cav. He figures uh, I can get my food eco up with the full works here from the poles. Knights are just going to get converted. Light cab have enough speed. They can run around, snipe the mangonels, snipe the monks, but... Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> oh, Viper saving that Magnol on 1 HP. Harry even targeted it with the tower. He was trying to finish that bad boy off and he just couldn't. And the Magnol comes back to snipe another villager. Harry gets out of dodge with this one. Still doesn't have that second TC, right? He's gone for another full work. He's still adding in uh, scouts. Doesn't even have the light cav upgrade yet. And there's another full work right there. Like I said, room is getting scarce in here. Real estate, well, there's not that much of it. Bloodlines and light cap coming out. Hera has pulled himself out of a lot of situations with nothing but light cap, but I don't think this is one of them, especially with redemption coming in from Viper. He'll be able to convert the mangonels pretty soon. I think we might be going into a game 21. Oh my God. As Viper now charges up against the Blacksmith. Hera's going to need to use that Blacksmith. It's actually not good if Viper converts that. And he does. It's not just charging up your conversion. Like, now Hera doesn't have a Blacksmith. <laughs> no second armor upgrade. No forging. Lightcap are coming out here. But Viper... What? You didn't even finish the wall, bro? <laughs> what? <laughs> Huh? Like have attempting to be converted. There's still monks here waiting for the mangonels to come. And Viper, I think, switch from the like have immediately to that mangonel. He gets it right away. He gets it right away, folks. Like have are coming in from this side, though. However, the pikemen are here. Hera is going to be trying to snipe this mangonel. Viper does get a good attack round on the light cav on this side. As he takes out the light cav over here and Hera, he got a couple kills, but wasn't enough. Wasn't enough. 48 villagers for Viper, 49 for Hera. Still under pressure, still adding farms. Second TC now going up for Viper. So he's going to start to expand his ego. Still no second TC from Hera. Ooh. I guess Hera attacked the blacksmith. I thought he was attacking this Mangonov. More like Cav. From Hera, more like Cav. We'll see, man. I mean, that's a decent amount of like Cav now. And Viper, he just hasn't had the food eco. To really sustain the pikeman production. He still has 11. Which is good. It should be able to take out this many light cav. Feels like he could have had more by now. But once again. Fudiko is not there right. Monk's trying to convert the mangonels. He's got both of them targeted. Just a couple lucky conversions. And thing can change. Hera uh, ducks out from under those mangonel shots. Doesn't want to get hit. Excellent micro from Hera here. With these light cav. He's just trying to get as much value from these as possible. And he finds his way in. Viper's pikeman kind of out of position. He's trying to snipe the monks. But all of the light cav are going down. And the monks are still living. For now. One of them. None of them. 
Mangano's still alive though. TC is dead as well. Hera is no TC gaming at this current moment in time. And Viper is 3 TC gaming. But Hera is now buying stone and Hera is stretching out gear. So I think Viper is going to need to track this, right? Because you can't just give Hera some more map control. Still have a really good position. You've forced Hera into all sorts of difficult decisions. You forced him into spamming light cap, into adding a ton of full works behind, into playing super condensed. But you need to control his expansion for sure. One for one on the Mangonels. Viper, 62 vils. Hera, 52. Eco upgrade, surprisingly better for Hera. Imagine if he had Heavy Plow this whole time, getting the extra food from the uh, farms around the full works. That would have been sick. He is going into more night production, and he still has five light cap queued. Like, actually not looking terrible for him. Now eagles are being added in here from Viper. And Viper's going to find this. He finds the TC. And that's not going to be a good feeling for him, right? Finding this area and knowing that your opponent has expanded while being under all of this pressure. It's not a good feeling at all. Because now he has to defend at home from the light cap, but he does have the walls there. Still hasn't completed this, which he's working on right now. And I think he added another one. Yeah, it's going to be fine. And now the outposts are coming from him. Look at this search from Hera. What is he looking for? He's found gold over here. He's just doing a general search of the area for resources. Viper's trying to send some of his pikemen back to deal with this. The light cap are going to be in. He's at 74 vils versus 56. So he still has a significant eco advantage. As these light cap come out, they're going to try and snipe the monks. Will they get them? It looks like they will. It looks like they will. Excellent micro from Hera. Look at this. He dodged around the house on this side to outran the pikemen. Sniped all four monks. Got the mangonel. And then he just runs back. Like an absolute demon. Great stuff there from Hera. And Hera goes for it. What? I mean, it's a TC. It is a TC. It is one of the TCs of all time. I think it can be said fairly. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what on earth is this? I love it. I love the energy. It's great. Maybe this is a T this is a TC to make more vills to then drop a castle with said vills. There you go. And Harris at 60 vills. Like, he's only 20 behind. It's weird to say that he's only 20 behind, but he is. Hmm. Harris pushing back, guys. He's definitely pushing back. And Viper, well... He's kind of retreating with his infantry a little bit, and Harris got time to come out for a castle. However, Viper has added a fourth TC behind this, and now he's starting into the eagle production. Harris just trying to expand still. Still is this TC out here. So strange. See, Viper, like, Viper is never going to expect that. Maybe that's the idea, right? The closer you are to danger, the further you are from harm. Viper goes for a castle here. Okay. When he finds this TC, <laughs> he's going to be like, what is going on? What on earth is going on? I don't understand. Someone help. All right, castle going up here from Viper. And that will give him a good launching point, but he's still not really close to Imperial Age. Has he found this? 
He's seen the chopped trees. But I don't think he realizes what's happening. Why would he? It doesn't make any sense, right? Villager is now dying on this side. 76 bills for Hera, 88 for Viper. Still covert bills over on that side. And another castle. Okay. Another castle from our boy. I don't know why I'm so obsessed with that TC, but I am. I definitely am. Knights now coming out with the monks from Hera. Obuk are in the queue as well to deal with the eagles and to deal with the pikemen. And the eagles are going to come in here and snipe these monks. Oh, damn. That's a costly loss for Hera. But I suppose the monks weren't really doing all that much other than healing your units, which I know he loves to do. And another TC. Wow, dude. All of his TCs are, like, on the fringe, too, aren't they? As he adds in more full works, more farming. How many full works this game, Hera? Seven rookie numbers. Rookie. Absolute rookie numbers. Imperial Age on the way for Viper. Four TCs of his own. And he's found it. <laughs> he's like, what? Huh? <laughs> what are you doing here? I don't, I, I don't understand. L d look at this. As we see the knights come in from Hera. Viper. Can maybe think about trapping this, right? If he comes in this way with the pikeman and then deletes this and goes for a gate here. He could have trapped that in. He's not going to do it, though. And the knights are just going to run away for the time being. Viper traps him there, though, and he traps him here as well. And Hera's not even moving. So at the end of the day, the trap doesn't mean too much. But Viper gets a lot of valuable damage. And the knights are very weak as they crawl on home. That's just insulting, Viper. You're going to add those farms underneath this TC. These men and women are fighting for their lives. And you're farming in front of him. Disgusting. It doesn't take much. Uh, it doesn't take many repairs for the villagers to be able to hop in there again. Pure Age is on the way for Hera as well. Viper's got that double castle stack though and he's discovered the TC over here as well. Hera goes for another one casually. Viper goes for a 5th TC over here too. And he's clearing up all the vills on this side. And now it's Kemeux for Viper. Maybe? Long term solution Kemeux could be really good against poles. They should absolutely destroy Obuk. We know they do well against Cavalry. And GG is being called from Hera and we're going on to game 21. Oh my god. When I started this, I was like, I don't know. Maybe it'll be like maybe it'll be like eleven eight. And I won't have that many games to do, but we're almost four hours in to my private YouTube cast. I hope that all the settings are good. Oh my god. I'm just now noticing that my mic is kind of low. Oh, I'm gonna have to pump that up. <laughs> Imagine I wasn't recording at all. It wouldn't be the first time it's happened. I have gone like an hour trying to record something and realized I never pressed the recording button, but I actually did this time. KD in favor of Viper. Eco in favor of Viper. And that Polish strategy. I mean, we saw how deep Hera got into the game, but I think that's more just a case of Hera being Hera. Rather than it being a particularly good strat. Uh, in this circumstance, but maybe it's just because he lost that Ville early and he felt like he was behind anyway. So he wanted to play defensive, couldn't play standard. Anyway, Viper at 10 wins. We're going to have to move over his number as well, right? No, we have to move his name over. Ooh. 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 Okay, well, you know what? It's not perfect. But it's only going to be here for one one game max. We see runestones as a loss for Hera. 
Oh, Serengeti as well. What, ooh, ooh, what, did Viper win Serengeti? He did, yeah. Hideout. We. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so there's one. There's gonna be one map left off of this because Arabia was the starting one. Okay, I don't think we played Hideout. Hera already played Britons, right? Oh my god. I didn't even mark them down. Probably screaming at me. Dave, mark the sieves. And I whisper, shut up. Win for that? What, did he win or lose with Mayans? <laughs> did he play Bengalis? I guess we'll know in the next game. <laughs> I guess we'll know, guys. I could figure it out, I guess. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so we lost with one of those sieves. We're figuring it out. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry about it. We got this. All right? I'm a professional. It may not appear that way, but I am. And it's going to be hideout. It's going to be hideout, and it looks like Viper lost with the Mayans because we got Bengalis here against humans. Oh, my God. Two of the best hideout civilizations. I think humans are sick here. And Hera absolutely got destroyed by Cumans the last time he played Hideout. He played up against Yo. He went Sicilians. And then he just went like... 24 pop Castleage into like 3 TC Boom. It's really underwhelming. Really, really underwhelming. We'll speed through the first part of this because it's Hideout. And uh, I guess we can talk about what each of these civs do. I mean, Hera's going to go up probably 17 bills up to Feudal Age. It's a 9 bill start, right? So you can go up obscenely quickly and get that second TC up. Now, Viper could choose to pressure, and he's already going for a barracks here. So he could go for, like, Men-at-Arms Towers or something to pressure. And with Bengalis, I mean, you're going to kind of keep up a little bit with the villager count because... You get two free extra ones when you advance to Feudal Age and Castle Age. So that's a four villager advantage, assuming you're... Oh, but... It's disgusting. I don't want to look at it. Why kill two of them there? It's it's awful. I'm, it's it's. Oh, no. He's going the wrong... He's going the wrong... He sent his scout and everything. He sent his scout all the way over here. And he still sent the villagers that way. And now he's like, well, <laughs> I've come too far. <laughs> he's sending villagers this way. There is four villagers coming this way. And there is two villagers coming this way. And Hera sees a militia. And then he sees two vills. But the militia is alone. And he's like, what is going on? What is happening? I don't understand. But Viper is still over here. It's just, it's a very confusing mess as Viper gets men at arms now. He's going to lose this militia, and it's not a good start. It's not a good start for him at all. It's tragic. He went the wrong way. This is why you got a scout, you know? And if your scout gets to here, and there's absolutely nothing so far, you turn this car around, and you take the villagers back the other way. A.K.A. this way. Viper is still ahead on villagers right now. These are still taking this sheep, which is absolutely tragic. But his eco is... It, it just doesn't look clean, does it? These guys are going to get here very late. Viper did not complete the men-at-arms upgrade because he lost that militia earlier. But still has enough stone for a tower here, and... Gonna go for an archer range. Gonna start the pressure. Now the reason um, that humans are so strong is because people attempt to do stuff like this all the time. All the time. If the resources aren't in an optimal position to be damaged by the push, aka the berries or the farms that the human player has already set up or the stone or the gold or whatever, 
the humans can just survive everything easily with the double TC. And eventually they're going to have like 20 extra villagers and their eco is just going to be insurmountable. It's definitely a risk coming forward like this against humans. Definitely. But at the same time, you don't want to just boom yourself. People try that one all the time too. And the humans are just ahead. Consistently. So, Bengalis are an interesting sieve here because of the extra villagers they get. They can. It feels like you can kind of keep up in some sense. If you send villagers forward for towers or whatever, at least you're getting two of them back when you get to Feudal Age. You don't have as much idle time. But still, he's already six villagers behind right now and just now getting inside the walls. And Hera's already on stone to defend. Also, Hera can go for a Siege Workshop here uh, in the Feudal Age. Now, Feudal Age Rams aren't that great. But what's so good about it is that you can have a Siege Workshop ready. If you're if you're forcing Castle Age, you can have a Siege Workshop ready right away to go for the Mangonels. Which is kind of sick. Now, Hera's still a ways away from Castle Age. But he does have a decent amount of farms right now. 15. And still continuing to produce fills from both TCs. As Viper still continues to push in. Fletching coming in for Viper could make things dangerous for Hera, though. And the tower is now up. So Viper needs to abandon that push. He'll work on the walls over here. And then maybe try and push in from this side. Nope. He just goes for a tower here. Interesting. Meanwhile, Hera goes for a barracks. Viper is housed. He doesn't know that that house is 93%. He's building houses at home. That's tragic, actually. He doesn't know this one. This one's so close. And he does have fletching advantage with this tower. So he should be able to range, um, outrange this tower. Or damage it. And take it down if Hera's not careful and Hera doesn't repair. Almost has enough stone for another one, and he might put it right here to cut hair off that stone completely. If he takes him off the stone, there's potential here for Viper. Hera is already adding in scouts on this side. He's got an archer working away, although he did lose one to the TC right there. And the scout production is, is good for Hera because he's going to have some military to potentially clear up Viper, right? But it's also good for Viper because it means that he's a little bit more delayed in getting to Castle Age. Nice. Tower goes down. Hera has done a fantastic job defending against this so far. I know the push was late, but the house wall here was beautiful. House wall here was beautiful. He went out to stone right away. He didn't get fletching fast enough, so he wasn't able to save this tower. But the towers are just simply buying him time, right? He's even adding in a second stable. Is he just going to go, like, full scouts to try and push this back? There's no spearmen here from Viper. It's just archers. Two militia. Like, where where is the spearman? He's he's coming. <laughs> he's heard the call. <laughs> he's on the way. And a third stable from Hera as well. Wow, bro. Third stable. He's not messing around. He is not messing around at all. Bloodline's coming in now. Still no foraging, still no armor. But three stable production, if he can keep it up. It's crazy. And there's the armor right there. I think Viper might just be overwhelmed. Like, he's got a lot of archers. He's got towers here. He's got a spearman forward. But if you're fighting against three stable scouts, you're going to need a whole lot more than that. Viper will be going up to Castle Age, though. Viper's still on stone. He's got some idle villagers here. He can click up now. Doesn't have to wait for that market. And Hera has shown the scouts. Viper is going to attempt to engage here. He does have the tower behind, so that might chase Hera away. But Hera's got three stables to produce these bad boys. Like... 
I don't know if he's all that intimidated by a simple tower and some archers. The barracks is being forced down here from Viper. He's going to try and save the villagers. Really wants the barracks to produce spearmen on this side, but now he can't even use Hera's walls as cover as Hera shift deletes all of the walls around his base. 65 villagers for Hera. 10 scouts for Hera. Fantastic defense, and this is the problem with the Cubans. You're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. You try an aggressive approach like this, they defend. Their eco is still outrageous. You try a uh, eco approach of your own, their eco is still outrageous. And then they hit you with their faster imp. Villagers running from tower to tower, though. Viper is still this is his first villager loss. And he still has some of the towers up. They're, they're very weak, but they're alive. Now he's going to get to Castle Age, and he's going for another barracks. Like, Viper's not giving up here. 43 villagers is not terrible. But Hera is on the way to Castle Age as well. As Viper ejects the remaining villagers, and he's going to fight before he dies with those things and well what's the solution here viper monasteries okay bengali's fallback plan it's extra armor monks even when your opponent is going three stable scouts just pikeman monk get it done okay now Hera doesn't have to worry about this area really over here can bring all his scouts over. He can fully focus on this. And Viper, well, he's going to have to quick wall his villagers. No. Hera doesn't even engage because of the threat of the pikemen. Viper will start massing up monks. Against scouts. Redemption. Not even sanctity. He's getting redemption first so he can convert the buildings. He's not trying to convert Siege. He wants to convert the buildings from Hera. And I suppose the monk is uh, so much easier to protect when it's just stationary here against the buildings, right? You can also stall out the production from Hera if you do that. It can be really, really nice. Wow. Crazy plays here from Viper. He's now going for Sanctity. He has the option of converting the buildings now, and he's going after the castle. Or sorry, not the castle, the, the, the stable. Jeez, it's been a long time. That also means he can have forward stables to make some scouts of his own or make some elephants of his own. Who knows? Have a great time. Make an elephant. I don't know. Scouts now working away on the monastery. Light cab is in from Hera. And the pikemen are forced to come back. Mangonel is still here from Viper, but he won't be able to save that, right? He will. Good positioning on the Pikeman there for Viper. Stamp Lancers uh, coming out from Hera. Those are going to be able to snipe that Mangonel. Pikeman kind of have them stuck in a corner. But Hera now with a Mangonel of his own. Viper is fully charged back up with that Monk. He could potentially convert this Mangonel from Hera, but Hera is still taking care of everything over here. Mangonel is not converted. Monks are cleared up. Light Cab are on the way now. No extra TC added for Viper. Is It's the final game. It's game 21. Viper's just trying to make something happen, but it's the Cumans, dude. It's the Cumans. And Hera goes for a castle, and I, I, I think it's, it's, almost, it's almost done. Right? Like, where's the win condition from Viper? Hera even goes for two additional TCs. That's how comfortable he's feeling right now. I guess you could snowball something, but once that castle is up, that's just somewhere that Hera can always retreat to. This is a difficult position for Hera because he doesn't want to give up that stable. But he also doesn't want Viper to switch his conversion to the Mangonel. And Viper is very deliberately charging up against that stable. He pulled his monk away at the last second there. 85 villagers against 50. Resources gathered. It's quite a bit more. <laughs> we won't even say the number because it's so high.
What? Viper's making a trade card. Viper is making a trade card. Don't worry. It's going to be okay. Alright, armored elephants need to take out the stables. They need to take out the castle. They need to take out everything. I want to see if Viper, like, deletes this trade cart to hide the evidence. Or does he send it forward to Hera's market? I don't think he can get there. Monk's still trying to convert the Maginal. Armored Elephant's coming in. And with these monks involved, I mean, he could potentially convert this Maginal, right? Kill the TC, maybe, but the Kipchaks are here to deal with the pikemen. Ballistics is coming in. The Mangonel does get converted. There's two TCs firing on these pikemen. There's a tower firing on the pikemen. The Kipchaks are now going to take care of these pikemen over here. The villagers are going to take care of the armored elephant. And the monks behind really aren't doing much. And Viper says, GG, well played, congrats. And that one goes to Hera. That is a crazy set. Best of 21. We go to the final game. Absolutely well. Probably the two best players in the game currently. And uh, Hera finishes it off with Cumans on hideout. Probably the best save here. Viper very clearly needed to push. He knew he needed to push, but he just couldn't do it. And it might just all come back to the direction he took with the villagers, right? He went up this way. He didn't go this way. He didn't go the close route. If he had went this way, he would have been in so much faster. With men-at-arms upgrade, too, which he ended up canceling. But yeah, Hera, Hera is playing really well. He beat Yo. Uh, he beats Viper now. Only by one game, though. So Viper's still very much in it to win the whole thing. If he gets some good scores somewhere else. Um, and yeah, super entertaining. Set. We'll mark it down here. Hera 11, Viper 10. I've got to go, well, not go to bed, but I'm going to go relax. Holy, I kind of didn't expect four hours of just casting to nobody. <laughs> no feedback whatsoever, but I hope you enjoyed. And uh, I will be uploading, well, I'll be streaming tomorrow. Uh, whenever this makes it up, it should be Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, all these best of 21s. And I'll be uploading them as soon as I can. So thank you very much for supporting me on YouTube. Come out and visit me on the Twitch stream. We have a good time over there, even if everyone's weird. Fine, you're probably weird too. It's great. And I uh, can't wait to see you. Thank you so much once again. Keep your stick on the ice. Have yourselves a good night, evening, morning, whatever it is. And I'll see you later. Thanks.